Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Ruddy and today we're going to explore the full site editing in WordPress by building a custom blogging team from scratch. You might be wondering what is full site editing? FSC for short represents a major shift in a way that WordPress website can be created. It is a tool that comes with WordPress 5.9 and above that allows you to build fully working websites based on drag and drop blocks. Before we begin, let me know what you think of the full site editing in the comments below. Smash the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. All right, before we begin, I just wanted to show you super quickly what we'll be building today. We're gonna be building everything that you see here from scratch. So we're gonna look into the project structure, the team setup, the team styles, such as the colors, topography, element, and much more. We'll look at the team settings that include things such as layout, palette, topography, spacing, etc. We'll look at some of the team parts, such as the header and the footer. And we'll look into creating page templates, such as this page here, and also the blog post page, as you can see inside here. And as we go along, you will see some of the issues and some of the benefits of using the full site editing. One thing that I wanted to stress is that I can't cover absolutely every single style and every single setting in this video because there are far too many, but hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be able to change the styles of your website. You'll be able to add other settings and so much more. All that said, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be using Laragon for my development environment, which is basically going to allow me to install WordPress locally. Of course, there are other great alternatives such as Exam and Local. I'm going to start this project from zero, which means that I'm going to install a brand new WordPress website. But if you already have WordPress website installed somewhere and you have the latest version, feel free to skip this section. Send this, let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a new WordPress website on the menu click app and then click WordPress. This is going to ask me for project name and I'm actually just going to call it WordPress. Press OK. And this will install the latest WordPress on my local environment and I should be able to access it under WordPress.test. All right, now that my website is ready, I can click visit site. And this will open the browser as you can see under WordPress.test the WP admin install, which means that we can configure the WordPress installation app. So I'm going to choose English United States as default and press continue. Now let's give our website a name. I'm going to call it paperless. This is what I called my theme. So I'm just going to stick to this. And then for the username, I'm going to click, I'm going to have admin. And for the password, I'm going to keep it simple and put password. Of course, I need to confirm the weak password in here. We are developing locally, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to add my email. Once we're done, let's click install WordPress and give it a couple of seconds. And now we can log into the admin panel. Click login and the username is admin and the password is password. Remember me and login. As you can see, I am currently on the latest version here, which is currently 6.0. And this version includes the full site editor, so we don't have to install anything else. If you hover over appearance, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you hover over appearance, you should see the editor here. And as you can see, currently is in beta. Let's have a look at the themes that we currently have. So if you go to appearance and then themes, this is where all the teams are stored. Here we have 2022, 2020, and 2021. We definitely don't need any of those teams because we're gonna be starting from scratch today. But if you wish to keep this one, 2022, uh, basically you can use this one as a blueprint. You can uh, look inside the files. You can see how the team is structured. And of course you can reference some of the settings as well. So the next thing that we need to do is start creating our team. So to do that, we're going to have to locate our website. So under Laragon, I can actually go here. If I click on here, root, this will give me all of the projects that I have. And the one that we just installed is called WordPress. So if I click on this, this is essentially a normal WordPress website. 
And in order to find the themes, all you need to do is go under WP content and then themes. So this is where all of the themes are. And if I was to delete the first two, for example, and remove them like so, then if I go back, you will see that if I refresh, they disappear and we only have the 2022 team. So we know that we're working in the right project in here. Obviously you don't want to delete the wrong files uh, on another project, but so this is the folder where we want to be inside teams. And this is where we're going to be creating our new custom team. So to do that, I'm going to create a new folder, right click new folder, and I'm going to call this team paperless. This is what I call it. Of course, you can call yours whatever you like. It's, it's just a name. And then inside this folder is where we're going to be adding all of the team files. Now, before we begin adding any of the team files, I actually want to insert the uh, screenshot of the team, which is going to be essentially this image here for the team. So I want to copy and paste it super quickly. So I'm going to paste it super quickly here. And the image is called screenshot.png. If I do view large icons, you'll see that it's just a normal image. And I've put the, the name of the template in here, paperless, and the dimensions of this image is 1200 by 900 pixels. And very important, this is called screenshot.png. Now that we have the team folder created here, it's best to just open it in our favorite code editor. And for me, this is Visual Studio Code. To do this, I'm going to do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. You definitely don't have to do this. This basically CDs to the folder that we just created for the team. And I can just do code uh, column and then press enter. And this will open Visual Studio Code with the folder open inside here on the left side in the Explorer. If you don't want to do the command line, the PowerShell thing, basically all you have to do is open your code editor and go under file and then open folder and find the folder manually. That's all. There is no difference whatsoever. And we are now inside the team folder that we just created. So what I'm thinking to start with is let's quickly create all of the files and I'm going to super quickly uh, give you an overview of what they do. But as we are developing the team, you will get very familiar with each file. And at the end of this video, you will know how they all work and why they're there. Let's start by creating the first folder, which is going to be called assets. So the first folder is essentially going to contain all of our assets such as CSS, fonts, images, JavaScript, and so on. So let me show you an example. Let's say we want to have a folder for CSS. This is where we can add additional style sheets. Then we can have a folder for, for any fonts that we wish to download and use locally. We can have a folder for images, IMG for short, and we can have a folder Oops, outside this, we can have a folder for JS, JavaScript. I'm not going to add any files in here just yet, but this is how you can structure your assets. And now the next folder that we need to look at is parts. Let me first of all create it. So new folder, parts, like so. And inside this parts folder, essentially we can create custom parts for layout. So for example, we can create a header part. So let me just create a header html so this has to be html by the way not php it has to be html and let's say we want to have another custom part for layout and we can call it footer dot html like so now of course you can add as many as you want and later on i'm going to show you how to use them but for now i'm just going to have the files here just so you understand what they do they're not going to break the layout or anything like that uh, so don't worry about them just yet. The next thing that we can do, the next folder is going to be called templates. So let's create a new folder. Templates. And inside this folder, essentially, we're going to have templates for uh, many of our pages. For example, uh, we can have a template for a homepage. We can have a template for the blog post. We can have a template for the search page and so on. Let me start by creating a few of them and you will understand what I'm talking about in a few minutes. If I was to create a new page inside here, maybe we can have 404 HTML and then maybe 
let me just close them i don't know why it keeps opening them let's close that as well so on the templates let's have another one archive.html html like so uh we can also have we can also have index HTML, which is going to be essentially the default homepage of our website, but we can also change that later on, which I will show you how to do. We can also have page.html. We can also have search.html and we can have, for example, single.html, which is going to be the blog post. So blog post search so if you want to have a custom search page this is going to be the pages template home page template and so on let me close this and let's finish off the rest of the files and the next file that we need to do is functions.php now this file needs to be outside those folders and uh, next to the screenshot so what i'm going to do is create a new file and let's call it functions.php let me close this as well and the next file that I need to create is index.php. Functions is going to have a lot of the setup for template, but not only that, you can do all sorts of custom functions for your website. Uh, you can add styles here, you can add fonts. It basically, you can do pretty much anything with functions, but I'm going to show you how to use it in a second as well. So everything is going to be clear. The next thing that we need to create is index.php. So index php like so and this page is actually not gonna have anything in it i assume that this page is here for legacy purposes uh because this is how wordpress used to work but inside here we don't have to have anything but we do need to have the index.php page the next thing that we need to do is create style.css so new file style.css and we also need the theme theme.json file so theme.json file is essentially the configuration file for the theme styles and block settings. We're going to be working mostly in the theme.json file. The style.css is kind of like self-explanatory. We, we can add uh, custom styles in there if we wish to, or we can add styles in the assets folder as well. Um, I can show you both, but one thing that it's important to uh, start with is the style.css. If we open the browser super quickly, I want to show you something. Uh, if we go to the official documentation, which is developer.wordpress.org slash themes slash basic slash main dash style sheet dash style dash CSS, this is where we can find an example of the style.css. This is going to be the information of our custom theme. So I'm going to copy this super quickly and paste this inside style.css. And then we can change a couple of things. For example, the name, feel free to choose whatever you wish. I'm just going to do paperless theme, paperless. And then I'm going to do, let's say, uh, the theme URL can be ruddy.dev slash paperless dash uh, theme. Then the author can be just me, ruddy. And then the author URI can be ruddy.dev and so on. I'm going to leave all of this as it is and say all themes should be available now inside WordPress. So if I go back and go under theme and press and click on appearance here, you will see that we have the paperless theme that we just created inside here. So I can actually activate this and start using it. So if I do activate, uh, this is now the active theme. And if I was to go to the website, which is wordpress.test for me, you will see that we have empty template index. And as I said earlier, index is our homepage. So if I was to go back to the code editor and go to templates and open index, I can just put rad, save it, go back and refresh. And you will see that rad is now rendered, which is awesome. But I'll probably change the settings in a second. So we're using an actual page for the homepage, which I will show you in a second. So I'm going to remove this from the index.html and save it, close it, that's absolutely fine. We can close the style.css and we can close the theme.json as well. And the first thing that we need to do is concentrate on the functions.php. Once we get past the functions.php, everything else should hopefully be a, a little bit more fun to do. If we open the browser one more time, and if you go to developer.wordpress.org 
slash teams slash block dash team creating dash new dash team dash using dash d dash site dash editor one of the examples here is basically setting up the team defaults and registering support for various wordpress features so we do need to have this all right and we need to copy this one here i think is the second one so what i'm going to do copy this and go to functions.php we need to open php in here and paste this super quickly so what we can change in here is the actual function we can name this whatever you like instead of my team we can name it paperless theme support i can copy this change the function and change the action here as well and that should be good if i save this you can go back to the website and refresh whoops that's a little bit zoomed in and as long as you have no errors in here we should be good to go now the next thing that i need to do is add the style.css uh, file and i couldn't figure out where i actually found it it's somewhere in the documentation i don't know where exactly it is uh, i did want to copy and paste it but instead what i'm going to do is super quickly write it for you and explain what it does so what i'm going to do is underneath here i'm going to create a comment super quickly you do slash star and then you can just put dashes if you want to make it pretty and then inside here i'm going to do nq styles Q styles and we need to close the comment like like so with a star and slash all right the next thing that we need to do is include the style.css to our project to our team so we can write styles and i'm also going to show you how to create a custom style sheet uh, somewhere in our assets css so for example let's create a new style sheet here so what i'm going to do new file and i'm going to call this one blocks dot css so i'm going to show you how to include this as well let's go back to functions.php so we start with function and the function can be called whatever you like i'm going to call mine paperless styles paperless styles like so open and close parentheses and open and close curly brackets so this is our function and inside here is where we're going to be enqueuing the styles so essentially we want to use a function called WP and Q and I've already opened the page inside here just so you can see it super quickly. So the, uh, this is the code reference that you can go to the developer.wordpress.org website and have a look, but this is how the function goes. I know it looks a little bit strange, but if you scroll down a little bit, you will see that the first thing that the function has, the first parameter is called handle this is the name of the style sheet and it should be unique the second one is the uh, full url of the style sheet which i'm going to show you how to get and then we have the depth and the default value is an array and so on so this is what i'm going to be doing and let me go back and you'll see how it works so inside here let's put a little comment we're going to do inside here let's put a comment register style sheet wp underscore and q underscore style just like i showed you and as i said the first parameter was the name which needs to be unique so i'm going to call my paperless style the next option was the actual uh, directory so we need to grab the source sorry so we need to grab the source of the file and to do this i can use uh, the get style sheet uri get style sheet underscore uri and we close this function this function will essentially get the style sheet dot css uh, url in here and just do it for us uh, we don't have to do anything else but i'm going to show you another example in a second then the next option was array as default and then we have the version for the version we can do wp get theme and then this is going to be a function like so get and then oops inside here let me close it super quickly so you can see version like so and we need to close uh, i think by mistake i deleted one of the parentheses so we need to close them on mine is kind of like as you can see it's highlighted 
and that should be good to go. So this was actually taken from the official documentation, but for some reason I can't find it. So I'm going to put it in here. And the next one that I want to show you how to do is the assets CSS blocks. So this is going to be almost the same, but we need to change the actual URL in here. So the actual uh, folder path. So let me show you how we can do this. So I'm going to copy this by doing Alt Shift down. This is going to duplicate the line. As I said earlier, this needs to be unique. So I'm going to put style, uh, paperless style, and then maybe we can do dash blocks like so. So instead of get style sheet URI, now we can change this to get template directory URI. This is going to go to the main directory of our themes here. So what I'm going to do, let's remove this super quickly and we can do get underscore template underscore directory underscore URI like so and we should be good to go. And the uh, next bit we can, we can remove all of this uh, leave as default and what we can do is put dot and then finish off the directories. So we need to go inside assets now and then CSS and then block. Blocks or block CSS. Let's have a look how I called it. So asset CSS blocks. Okay, I called the blocks. So it needs to be blocks.css. And this is how we include the styles. But this is not done just yet. As you can see inside here, we have a add action. So we need to have the same thing for this. So the function can be triggered and we can add the styles. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this and paste it underneath here. And instead of after setup theme, we need to change this to WP and Q scripts. So WP underscore and Q scripts. And we can change this to the function that we have here. So copy and paste. That's it. If we want it to be consistent, just like uh, inside here, uh, this is the original from the theme. So what we can do is copy the if statement, um, wrap everything inside here. So this is basically checks if uh, function paperless theme support exists, but this time it's going to be paperless style. So if this function exists, then uh, obviously run the code and then we can have end if like so inside here and that should be good. So as long as these two are the same, yep, we're good. All right. So what we can do now is go back to the website. Wait, but let's make sure that the theme is actually active. So as you can see, the theme is active here. And if we go to the actual website, let me zoom in, refresh. As long as everything works in here, we should be good. So what I want to demonstrate now is if we do control and U to inspect the source code of this page, what I want to see is whether we have the style.css inside here. So if I scroll down a little bit, you see the first link in here. So we have theme paperless style.css. We just included this, which is awesome. And if you look just below it, we have uh, that we have the paperless folder asset CSS blocks.css. So this is how you can enqueue multiple style sheets. Just make sure that the names are unique, uh, the IDs are unique, and that's pretty much everything I can think of here. So now we are actually done with the functions.php and we can close it and focus, hopefully focus on the fun part of this tutorial. So let's go back, close functions.php and make sure that you have saved everything. Now that we have pretty much everything set up, let's remove some of those pages from here as we won't need them anymore. And let's change the homepage to be an actual page from WordPress. So what I mean at the moment, we have empty template index. And essentially this is using the templates and the index.html from here. Now what I want to do, I want to create a custom page for the homepage, but I want that to be inside my um, actual WordPress website. So what I mean is if we go to the dashboard super quickly, I'm going to open another tab and go to pages. I want to create a homepage inside here so we can edit it whenever we like with the editor. So what I'm going to do instead of creating a new one, I'm going to edit the sample page here. So let's click edit and then let's just call this one home. So we know what it is. And of course you can change the slug from here, the permalink. So I'm going to just call it 
Com. and update we have a little bit of the food content here which is absolutely fine this will come in hand in a second but if we go back and if you go to the actual website one more time so wordpress.test you'll see that we still have empty template index and this is because it's still using the index as our homepage. so what we need to do is go to the dashboard go to settings and then reading from here, we can choose a static page by clicking on this radio button and then selecting the home page to be home. That's it. We don't have to do anything else and save. The next thing that I like to do, and this is totally preferential, you don't have to do this, is I like to change the permalinks. So if I was to go to permalinks, as you can see, you have a lot of choice from here. You can have explain day um, day and name and so on so essentially what this does is this is going to be your website name and then how your permalinks are displayed in terms of like how your url is structured so for example in, inside here we have the website name and then we have a post name so sample post i don't really like this i like to have blog in between so we have the website we have maybe a custom page and then we have blog slash the blog title. So what we can do in here is we can create a custom one. I actually can just do blog and we need a slash before as well. So blog slash post name. That's what I want. And as I said, this is totally optional and I'm going to click save changes. And now if I go to posts and if I view this hello world post, you will see that it goes under wordpress.test blog and then the post name here, which is how I like to structure my website. All right, now before we do anything else, let me show you the editor. So I'm going to close those two and let's go back to the dashboard and click appearance and then editor. Inside the editor is essentially where you can edit, edit pages and templates. So if you click on the WordPress logo in here, you will see that we have the editor. We can edit site. At the moment, we're editing the page template, which is this one here under templates page.html as default. And then if we click on templates, you will see that we have some of the templates that we created earlier in this tutorial, such as the 404 archive index and so on. The good thing about this is that they actually uh, give you a little bit of a description what they do, which is great. And also you don't have to create them manually inside a code editor you can actually create them from here if you wish to. I felt that it was just much faster to get the whole project structure earlier on in this video. And now we can concentrate on building stuff. The next thing that I wanted to show you is the template parts, which is the parts inside here. So we have this folder parts and inside the parts folder earlier on in this tutorial, we created the footer and the header. Obviously they're empty, but if you go back, you can see the template parts in here. You can obviously create a lot more and you can also edit them just by clicking on the actual template and you can start building the full set, for example, in this case, by adding elements and so on. So, okay, let's go back to the home page. And as you can see, we have empty template page. And I know that this might be a little bit confusing, but essentially I want to use this template page.html and I want to pull out content from the actual pages, from the actual pages, which are inside here. So pages. So I want to pull out content from those pages. What we need to do is go to the editor, click on templates. And as we are using a page as a template now, we can click on this. If we click on toggle block inserter here and search for post and then post content, we click on this, this should take the data from the actual page. And if I was to save this and go to the actual website, you will see that we have some text. And this text is actually coming from the home page, which is under pages and then home. So if I was to edit this and add something, it doesn't really matter what it is. Let's say you can do slash by the way and add whatever you like. So for example, heading and let's say heading one and what I can do is like this change the heading to heading one and update so if I go back to the website you'll see that we're getting heading one and so on so we can start building blocks now the reason I'm doing this right now is because I want to add a couple of elements on the page so we can see how our website is changing so we can see 
uh, that our typography wor is working. We can select different colors. We can uh, do uh, different layout widths and so on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a couple of elements and then we're going to start by creating the actual theme. So let's go back to the page here. So what we can do is create a couple of headings, first of all, and we already have a paragraph. Maybe we can add a button and so on. So in order to duplicate this uh, heading, I can do control shift and D. And as you can see, this is duplicated. So I can duplicate this a couple of times. Maybe we can have heading two, heading three, heading four, and heading five. I know they don't look very good in the moment, but that's absolutely fine. We're going to edit absolutely everything and make it look nice. And I think there is one more heading. So let's do heading six as well. And of course, we're going to need to change those settings. So this is heading one. This is heading two. This is heading three. This is heading four, five, and six. Okay. So if I was to update this, go back to the home page. We have the headings. I'm not sure if I'm zoomed in. Yeah, I'm zoomed in quite a lot. So that's why uh, they look this way. But this is the way they look as the food. So this is 100%. It doesn't look too bad. Of course, we'll fix everything. And if I go back, for example, we could also add a button or something. So I'm going to press enter and let's add a button. And and I'm just going to put button like so. So this is the default button. Let's update it and let's go back. As you can see, this is the default button, nothing special. All right, now that we have a couple of elements on the page, I think now is a good time to have a look into the settings of our team and the styles. Now let's jump back into Visual Studio Code and let's open the team.json file. So as you can see, this is a standard.json file which means that inside this JSON file, we're going to be defining objects and properties. It's fairly simple and you'll get the hang of it. But as we build up stuff in the theme.json file, it's going to get a little bit hard to see in a way. It's like, I think there is too much information, but the more you do it, I guess the easier it gets. So the first thing that we need to do is open and close curly brackets. Everything that we're going to write in this theme.json file is going to go in these curly brackets. And because there is a lot of settings and they're very hard to remember, what we can use is the schema provided by the WordPress team. So if you do double quotes and add schema, I'm going to show you what this does. But essentially, you want to add a URL. This URL comes from the official documentation. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste it. So the URL is https column slash slash schemas dot wp dot org slash trunk slash theme dot json. And what this does is it allows Visual Studio Code, well, my editor in this case, to help me with autocomplete. So if I was to put comma now, and if I was to start another line, so double code, we're now getting suggestions, which is amazing. So this is going to help us autocomplete uh, any styles, settings, and so on. This is perfect. Now, the next thing that we need to set up here is the current version, which is version number two. If you don't put a version, this is going to default to version zero, I believe, and it might not work with the latest Gutenberg blocks. And also, basically, you want to have version 2, and also you want to have WordPress 5.9 and above. So make sure that you update your WordPress website and you have version number 2. Otherwise, the settings might not be the same and they might not work. Let's do another comma. And then inside here, we can start looking into the settings and the styles. So these are going to be the two main sections that we're going to focus on today. And we'll probably add some template parts later on. So these are the two important things that we need to look. And settings is essentially where you define your block controls for the layout, colors, uh, typography, spacing, uh, borders, and so much more. And styles is where you apply your uh, colors, font sizes, uh, typography, elements, you can target different elements such as the headings, uh, you can change the buttons and so much more. So we will explore quite a few options in here, but um, let me get started with settings. 
So inside the settings, as you can see, we have curly brackets in here as well, and we can write the settings inside here. So all of the settings are going to go inside the curly brackets and we can start with the layout. I believe that this is a good one to start. It's a little bit complicated to uh, navigate, but I'm going to try to explain it as much as I can. It can be a little bit confusing this one. So let's start by writing two double codes and then layout. Here it is autocomplete kicks in and I'm just going to press enter. So for the layout, if we do double quotes, you will see that we only get two options. Content size is the default width of the blocks. And you can also set white size for white blocks if you wish to. And I'm going to show you, and I know that this doesn't make any sense in the moment, but I'm going to show you an example. So for example, let's set content size to be something like 800 pixels comma, and then we can set the white size to be a little bit bigger, uh, maybe something like 1183 pixels. Let's save this and let's go back to the website. And if you refresh, you'll see that nothing has happened. This is because we need to have a container and then we can tell the container how we want it to be displayed. But let me show you something else. If I was to edit this page, so let's click edit page. I'm going to open a new tab here. Look at what happens. So this uh, this text is now kind of like in the middle. And this is because we've set the content size to 800. If I was to change it to 900, save, let me refresh and you see what happens now. It goes a little bit wider. So this also controls the editor size. So I'm going to put it to 800. So this also controls the editor size inside here, which is great. So I'm going to refresh it one more time. And now let me show you how we can use the well essentially this is still full width so nothing is happening here I'm, i can refresh and nothing is kicking in and this is because we need to be using the group from the editor here so let me show you if you jump back to the editor and click on the plus sign here and search for group and let's add a group somewhere it doesn't really matter and actually this is not only available in group it's available on other elements as well, but let me show you what I mean. So now that I've dragged a group inside here, what I can do is if we go to the view list, I can drag everything inside this group, first of all. It's a little bit hard. Here we go. You just have to wait a couple of seconds sometimes and it works. So now that we have everything inside the group, if I click on the actual group, you will see this icon here. And with this icon, we can change the max width and the wide width, and we can also have a full width. Now, this is going to be a little bit confusing, but let me update, go back, and nothing happens. Now, this is because, it's a little bit weird, but this is because we need to set this group. Uh, we can set it to inherit the default layout. So if I set it like so, and update, you will see that now it's changing. It's a little bit weird how it works, but you'll get used to it. When we start building or header or footer, you understand how it works. But let me show you something else now. Now, if I jump in and if I change this to wide width and save it, it also won't work. Nothing is happening. And this is because we need to have another group inside in order for us to be able to use those uh, alignments. Uh, it's a little bit strange. Also, the alignment doesn't just work on groups. It works in other, on other elements as well. But uh, this is the best way to show you, I guess. So let me create one more group. And the way I think of groups is kind of like a container. So I'm going to drag this one here. And then I'm going to open the list. And what we can do, oh, it's already inside this group. So now what I can do is select everything by holding Shift. And then let's jump inside. Brilliant. Now inside here, as long as I have this one set to the inherit the full layout, inside here, I can mess around. So I can have this to 800 pixels wide. Let me update. And as you can see, nothing changes. And now let's set it to wide. And if you go back, you will see that it's now wide, which is perfect. And if we change it to the last one, which is full width, let's go back. Boom, it's full width. So this is how the alignment, the layout works. It's a little bit tricky, but once you start using it, it will make a little bit more sense. And now let me pull it back to, what should we put it back? 
I mean, let's put it back to none. And I'm actually going to change the value in, the, in there as well. So I'm going to update this just so we have everything in the middle. It's a little bit better to see, I guess. And if I go back, I'm actually not going to have white size and content size. I'm going to set both of them the same. Uh, but of course, depending on your layout, you might wish to have two. And I just wanted to show you a super quick example of why you might want to do that. If you wish to create um, a layout where the content is a little bit inside and then you have a bigger image. So that will potentially allow you to do that. And also why not have different uh, widths? Uh, I think it's a pretty useful feature to have anyway. All right, so let's move on to the colors. If we go back to the editor here, and if we select the heading one, you will see that on the right side, there are a couple of options that we can use. We can change the color of the text, we can change the background, we can change the topography and so on. Starting with the color here, if you click on it, you will see that we have a couple of default colors. So if I was to click on the red, as you can see, the heading becomes red and so on. So what if we wanted to bring our own branding colors in here? Now, I'm going to do Control and Z to reverse this update it. And I'm going to show you, I've already prepared my branding colors for this website. They're a little bit boring, but uh, it doesn't matter too much. So for my branding uh, colors on this website, particularly, I have a very dark color, which I'm just going to call black. It's not fully black, but it's very close. This is a gray color. And this is a kind of like a dirty white color. It's not fully white, but these are my branding colors. Not the most exciting colors, but that's what I've chose so far. So what I'm going to show you now is how we can add the custom colors. Let's jump back into teams.json and we need to be inside settings. So as long as you are here inside the curly brackets, let me zoom in even more. As long as you're here inside the curly brackets, outside the layout, so just outside the layout, we can put comma and then we can do color. Inside the color, we can bring in the palette. So double quote, palette like so. And inside the palette is where we can define a couple of colors. So to define colors, we need to define them in curly brackets like so. And inside here, if you type, if you start typing with the double quote, as you can see, we have three options. So let's start with the slug. The slug actually has to be unique and I'm going to show you something super quickly. Let's say I want to name my first color black like so. And let's say the actual color hex value is 131313. That is the actual one. And then last but not least, let's give it a name. Now the name you can call whatever you like. I'm going to call it black here and save. Now, technically speaking, this won't work. And the reason for this is because black is already taken. So you kind of have to have a unique slug. And let me show you what I mean. If I go back to the website, not only you can see that inside the text here, we have black, but also if I go to the website, right click inspect. And then if we click on the body here, just so we can see the variables available, you will see this dash dash WP dash dash preset dash dash color dash dash black. And this will, we can't overwrite. So we'll have to be unique. And you might be thinking, well, why don't we just uh, call all colors foreground, background, primary, secondary, and so on. And you can do that. That's what most people do. But I just wanted to be very descriptive. This is a preference. And what I'm going to do is instead of black, I'm just going to call it paperless black as we called or team paperless. And this is going to be a little bit more unique and we'll be able to see in the variables a little bit easier, I guess. So if I save this and let's go back and refresh the page here, I'm still selecting the body. And if we scroll down a little bit, you will see that we have a new variable called paperless black here. Oh, well, it's WP preset color paperless black and we have the hex value. Now we can actually reuse this variable throughout the entire website. You can add it into your CSS if you wish and so on. So this is the great thing about the teams.json file is that you have all of your settings in one place and you can reuse them throughout. And the other thing that I wanted to show you now is that if we close this super quickly and if you go back to the edit page and refresh, hopefully now if I click on the heading and go to color, you'll see that we have theme colors. So we've only added one, so we have one in here and you can do exactly the same thing with gradients, but on my website, I'm not going to have any gradients, so I'm going to skip this part. But gradients are more or less the same. Just have a look into the documentation if you need to add them. 
and you understand straight away how to add them. It's more or less the same as adding a normal color. Also, I wanted to mention that these colors are also available in the background here. Uh, they're available anywhere that has color. All right, let's jump back into Visual Studio Code and add the other two colors. So I'm going to copy this, put comma, paste. I'm going to paste one more and this one is going to be gray. I'm going to change it to gray and the gray color is going to be 8, 8B, 8B, 8B. That's absolutely fine. And this one is going to be white. And the white color is going to be F7, F7, F7. And I'm going to call it white like so. Let's save this, go back, refresh, and let's have a look. As you can see, we have the three colors here and you can add as many as you want, but that's what I have in my design. Let's move on to the typography. As you can see with the typography here, it's, um, it's the default typography, so it doesn't look very good. Let me quickly pull up my design here in Figma. And for the headings today, I'm going to be using Stozil, which is an Adobe font. And I'm going to use for the body, for the text, I'm going to be using Inter, which is a Google font. Now, the reason I wanted to have two different fonts is because I wanted to show you two different ways of including a font. And in fact, there are many ways, but I just wanted to show you two ways. The body font we're going to actually download from Google and include in a folder. And this one, I'm actually just going to uh, link this in my star sheet. So let's start with the body font which is Inter. First of all, let's go to the search engine, search for Inter, and the first link should be Google Fonts. Today, I'm going to be using, let me deselect them just so you see, but today I'm going to be using the light one, 300, select, and I'm going to be using the regular one, 400, select this one as well. And as you can see, this lists the fonts here on the right side, and it gives us a couple of options. You could include this link inside the functions.php if you wish to. You can import this into your style if you wish to, or you can download them. I've already downloaded this font. I'm going to skip the downloading bit here, but click on download, and this will give you a zip file with the font. All right, let's jump back into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go to the Explorer, Assets, font and inside here is where I'm going to paste the font. So I'm going to open this reveal in file explorer. I'm going to paste into here and I've actually copied every single font, but I'm only going to be using regular and light. Okay. So if I close this, go back to Visual Studio code here, the font, and let me show you how we can include the body font. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're in settings. We can be just outside the color. So if I click on color, we can just start from here, comma, and then inside here, we can start with typography. And let's start with the font families. So for the font families, and inside here, we need to open curly brackets and close curly brackets. So now let's start double quote and font family. Inside here, we can write the font family. You can find it from the Google page. So it's inter sans serif. I'm going to copy this super quickly, and I'm going to paste it inside here. Of course, you can have fallback, so you can write more fonts, like, uh, let's say, Arial and so on, and then comma. For, we also need to have a slug, so this one is going to be a unique one. I'm going to call it Inter, like so, and we need to give it a name, and the name can be or body text, and it's just called Inter. Last but not least, because we're going to have two weights in here, so we're going to have font weight 300, font weight 400. Yeah, the regular is 400. So we're going to have two. And let me show you how we can do that. So after the comma, we can do font face. And inside font face, we need to open and close curly brackets and start listing the first one. So this is going to be font family. And I can copy it from here. Paste it. Comma. And then inside here, we do font weight. The font weight for the first one is going to be 300, comma, and then we can do font style if you wish, and this is going to be normal. Then we can do font stretch, and there are a lot of options that you can use uh, if you wish to. I'm going to put normal. And the last thing that we need to do is locate the actual font. So we need to do source, 
and then column and inside brackets like so we can start typing file column dot and then we can start writing the folders so the folder inside here is assets font and enter and then we choose the font so in this case we're going to do assets font enter and then enter dash light which is this one here and the extension is oops dot ttf like so and that's pretty much it and the other thing that we can do is put comment here and add one more oops sorry the comment needs to be inside here so comma let me save it and prettier kind of fixes it for me so i'm using prettier and this is why my json is looking quite uh, well organized so we need to copy this paste it here and everything stays the same except this goes to 400 and this goes to regular instead all right let's save this and if we go back to the website and refresh you will see that nothing is actually happening this is because we've actually included the font it's in all settings but we're not using it yet and this is where things are going to get a little bit confusing but i feel like i need to do it now so you understand how it's done so essentially we need to go out of settings now i need to close this and we need to start writing the styles otherwise it won't make sense if i write all the settings first writing them step by step is going to be much better let me know in the comments below by the way if you have any suggestions so what we need to do is we need to open styles so comma after the settings and we need to start styles inside styles is where we can target the typography so for example let's do typography and inside here is where we can actually set the typography so let me show you what this means essentially let's do font family and now uh, if you remember in the settings we just created where is, where is it we just created this inter font family and essentially this creates a variable for us i'm going to save it super quickly go back and i'm going to try to show you i'm going to do right click inspect and if you go to the body one more time we should be able to find the around the bottom i believe uh here it is w dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash font dash family dash dash inter and here is the font so essentially i can use this variable in fact i'm going to copy it and put it in the styles so if we go back to the styles font family we can do var just like in css where you add a variable and we can input the variable name that we just created all right, let's do comma and let's have a look at the other options and for example an important one can be the line height which i want to set to 1.75 and of course i can actually create a custom variable for this as well and i might show you how to do this later on so let's do it like this comma and then let's put font size to be one rem for now save it in fact it's going to be one rem let's save this and let's go back to the page now and refresh okay as you can see the font is looking much better now not only the body font has changed but we also have well the fonts changed pretty much everywhere inside the buttons the body text and also the headings but for the headings we're actually gonna be using the other one which is uh Stozil, and i'm gonna show you how to add that now so for the Stozil one let's copy the name super quickly and let's go back to ecosia so let's put Stozil font and if we go i think this is a yeah this is an adobe font so the first page here and i need to sign in super quickly i had to sign in and now if you scroll down a little bit you will see this button here add to web project click on it and inside here you can create a project or select an existing one so i've already created this one here as you can see paperless fsc team and this should give me if you see you can select what font you want i want the regular and the boat in fact i just want the boat sorry and then i can save this now this is going to give me two options this is going to be give me the link which i can do inside the functions or we can import it so what i'm going to show you now is a different way i'm going to import this into my css and if i grab this import url from here like so and if you go back to visual studio code go to 
explorer open style.css and inside here let me close it inside here we can paste it and we can and we can put a little comment so this can be so this can be adobe font okay so this is an option it's probably not the best one but i just wanted to show you how to do it anyway so now that we've included this font let's have a look at how we can change our headings i'm going to save this close it and in teams.json we're going to have to scroll back up and in font families is where we can add a new one just like this after font families after the bracket we have one font and in another set of curly brackets is where we can add the other font so underneath here comma open and close curly brackets and inside here is where we can add the other font and i'm just going to write it super quickly just because it's easy so i'm going to do font family and this one is going to be called stozil and then we can give it a backup if you want area like so and this is going to be sans serif like so comma then we can add the slug the slug is going to be just stozil and last but not least we're going to have the name which we can call headings stozil like so save so this is going to create a variable for us and we don't have to include it like we did with the source we've included it in the style.css i hope this makes sense and this is not going to work just yet so if i was to go back and refresh the page nothing is happening and this is because we actually need to use the variable that we just created and target the headings so if we inspect this go to the body sorry one more time and i'm going to stop doing this but if i inspect this and go to the bottom you will see that we have the font family into variable and we have the font family stozo now we need to use this variable here for the headings and let me show you how we can do that next all right so for the headings we need to go back and we need to be inside styles so as you can see here i've got themes.json and styles as long as you click on this this should uh, tell you where it starts and closes so under the typography we can actually target individual elements and to do this you put comma and then you do elements inside the element is where we can target our heading so for example h1 for the h1 inside here we can do typography and for the typography we can do font family and we can set the variable that we just created dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash font dash family dash dash tozo perfect close this and put a comma and then we can do font weight if you wish and a font weight i believe is 800 for this one because i want it to be bold comma and then we can do line height and the line height can be 1.3 for this and we can also create a custom variable for this and maybe i can show you that in a second and then we can do another comma and do font size and inside here is where we can put the font size for example just for now let's do 42 pixels just so we can see so save this go back to the website and refresh as you can see the font has changed and also the size has changed which is awesome so this seems to work now if you go back for the font size the line height and so on we can actually create custom variables instead of hard coding them like so and the reason for this is because if you have variables like them it means that you can reuse them in your css anywhere and it just makes things a little bit easier i guess but at the same time it's kind of like the whole json gets gets a little bit more complicated let me show you how we can change this into a variable into a custom variable so first of all we need to go back to settings so settings in here i can click on this to locate where the ending is here it is so technically speaking just after this one this settings is the typography the last one that we've written and just after the typography, I can add a custom setting. Let me show you what this means. So I can do custom and inside here is where we can create custom, uh, any custom uh, variables. So what I'm going to say is the first one is going to be typography. Typography and then by the way, you can call this whatever you like. And then inside here, we can put font, for example, font size like so and inside the font size is where we can have different font size inside the font size we can have all sorts of font sizes now i've already prepared a few but as we are working on the heading let me start with the heading and i'm going to show you the rest 
So for the heading, we are going to be creating a custom variable. So let's do heading one, for example, heading one, just to be very descriptive for this tutorial, but you can call it whatever you like. And then inside here is where we put the size. So let's say 52 pixels. Okay. So if I was to save this and go back to the website, I'm sorry about this, but let's inspect it one more time. Refresh, go to the body and then let's have a look at the last variables. So as you can see, we now have a custom typography font size heading one variable here that we can use. So I can grab this, go down to styles, we in styles here, then we go to elements, h1. So this is the heading one. And instead of font size 42, I can replace this with variable and put the variable here. Technically speaking, if I was to refresh the page now, this should work. I don't know if I changed the value. Let me just inspect this super quickly. So you can see that the font family has a variable, but the font size does not. So I wonder what I've done font size. That's actually save. Refresh. I just had to maybe refresh a couple of times, but as you can see now, we have font size. And if I hover over it, it says 52. So as you can see, the font size is 52 which is not great for responsive web design. And in the themes.json, there is not really a way of doing media queries unless we use CSS, which means that we need to do something else in order to have responsive fonts. So if I was to scale this for mobile, of course, I don't want the heading to be that big. I want this to scale. So what we can do is we can actually use the CSS clamp property and calculate how big we want the heading to be on, on small screens and large screens. So let me show you what I've done. I'm going to, I'm going to quickly bring my design here. And if I go here to the left side and zoom out a little bit, you will see that I've already calculated the small heading. So this is the, for the small screens and this is for the large screens. I know it doesn't look very tidy, but I've done this super quickly. And as you can see, we have different rem values. This is the small rem value and this is the large rem value. Now you might be wondering, well, how did you get to those values? First of all, design your website the way you want. Maybe you should design bigger headings and then you should design how you want them to look on small screens. And then once you decide, um, I know Figma works with pixels, but once you decide you can convert your pixels. All right, so if I click on the heading one and if I inspect super quickly, you'll see that this is 39.8 pixels. So you can grab the pixels and just convert it two rems and this is what I've done and then I've done the same for the small headings. Now after this what I've done is I went to this website here. I went to this website here the clamp calculator. Um, I will paste this link in the description below by the way and what I've done is I've taken the minimum size and the max size. So let me take the minimum size for example for the heading one. Paste in here and I'm gonna get the big heading size and oops and paste this in here. And now this will calculate it. Obviously you can change the values here to suit you and your design, but now this is gonna calculate it for us and I can literally copy this bit here. Actually, I can't, I'm gonna have to copy everything and then edit it. And now if I go back to the theme.json file, uh, where the variable is, we need to locate it. Let's go up, uh, where did it go? Okay, here it is topography font size heading one. So instead of putting 52, what I can do is put the, uh, let me, let me make some space. So all I need to grab is the clamp here, remove this, and then I can just replace the value in here. And this clamp property is essentially going to help us make our font responsive. If I was to go save this, and if I was to go back and refresh, Let's toggle the device toolbar super quickly and look at how my font is going smaller. And then when I go up, it's going slightly bigger. I could have potentially made it even smaller, I guess, but I like it this way anyway. And I think that this works for me. So what I've done is I've gone to my design and I calculated every single font. So I done it for heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, and I put the clamps. So what I'm going to do now is do that super quickly. All right, let's put comment here and let's copy this a couple of times. So I'm going to copy one time here, remove this, and I'm going to copy, copy it one, two, 
three, four. I think that should be enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And then inside here, I'm going to paste. We need to remove the comma at the end, by the way. And inside here, I'm going to replace the clamp values that I've already calculated. So I'm not going to waste your time with this. Calculate your own ones if you wish. Or pause, pause the video and just save them if you wish. So I'm going to copy them super quickly. and paste. Cool. Now that we have those values in here, we should have the six variables. If I was to go back to the website, refresh, inspect, and go to the body one more time, I'm going to be continue doing this, I guess, for the rest of the tutorial. And if we go down to the bottom, you will see that we are getting all the topography here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, but they don't work just yet. And this is because we need to go back to the JSON file go down here to element and we need to add a couple of more elements. So we need to add the rest. So I'm going to do, let's copy this. Uh, we need to do comma. Now the comma needs to be, yeah, the comma needs to be after this, sorry. So comma and let's copy all of this. And for example, this is going to be H2 and this is going to be H2 is one. h3, h3, which uses the h3 variable, h4, h4, h5, h5, and last but not least, h6, h6, save. If I go back to the website, refresh, as you can see, they're all looking great on desktop. And if I was to inspect and go down, they all shrink, which is exactly what I want. Of course, if this does not work for you, what you can do is use media queries and just target the headings with their unique class names. Let me just have a look super quickly. They do not have class names. So you can just target H1, H2, H3, and so on, and write media queries inside your style.css if you wish to. Now that we have this done, let's have a look at what else do we need to do. Okay, one thing that I mentioned actually is the line height. So the moment the line height here is actually hard coded, and if we wish to, we can create more variables. Just like we created the topography font size variables, we can create more custom variables, and just for this example, let me show you one more and we're going to do line height instead. So we can do, I think outside topography, maybe we can do line height. So I'm going to do comma and then we can do line height. And for the line height inside here, we can set a couple of different line heights. For example, you can have tiny. Tiny can be 1.15. We can have small, so the small one can be 1.3. And in fact, this is what I'm going to be using. And then we're going to have medium. This can be 1.4, for example, and then we can have normal, which is 1.6. So I should be able to get this variable. If I go to the website, inspect, refresh, it's just easier to grab the, the variables like this. And if I go down, we should be able to see it somewhere, hopefully. Uh, yep, yeah, I need the small one. So I'm going to grab this and go back to the headings. So we have heading one. Instead of doing line height uh, manually here, we can do it with a variable and paste the variable inside here, just like so. And that should work as well. So I'm going to copy this and do it for the rest of the headings, just so we have it. Like so and save. That should be exactly the same as before. So as we are sp still speaking about topography, let's go back to edit the editing page here, refresh this, and let's have a look at what's happened. As you can see, all of the font has now changed as well inside here. It looks very pretty. Uh, the headings are working and everything is looking good. One thing that you might notice here in the block panel here on the right side, you will see topography. And we have a couple of um, default sizes. So we have 13, we have 20, 36, and 42. 
And what I want to show you now is what if you want to add custom ones? I don't know if you notice on my design here is that I had also regular text, medium text and small text. Now this actually goes across for the big screens in here that I designed. So I'm going to be using those three values to have custom made in here. So let me show you how we can do that. In order to do that, let's jump back into the theme.json. Let's go up and find settings. So settings, we need to find topography and inside topography, this is going to be just outside here. So let me show you. So just outside the font family, we basically want to add another object and give it some properties and the object. So as long as we go under font families, which is here, it's very hard to see. And we do font sizes. So for the font sizes, we can do it exactly the same as we done it with colors. So inside here, we open and close curly brackets and we do double quote slug. And then for the slug, we can do small, for example, and then comma. This can be size and the size I've already calculated to 0 0.64 rem comma. And then we do name, which can be small with capital letter. Now I can copy this three times, comma, paste, comma, paste, and I can change the values super quickly. This is going to be medium. I'm going to copy it, paste it change it to capital and for the size I'm going to go with 0 0.8 and the last one is going to be regular and for the regular let's go with one rem which is usually equivalent to 16 pixels save this go back to the page refresh and look at what happens to typography now I'm going to select something and now we only have three sizes we have the small one the medium one and the regular one so this is how you can change this. All right, the next setting that I want to have a look is spacing. Now, spacing is kind of important because sometimes in your layout, you might want to add custom paddings and custom margins. This is what exactly spacing does, and I'm going to show you how to add it. In Team JSON, we need to go to settings. So here it is. Whoops, a little bit confusing. Here it is, settings. Let's go down to where it ends. We can just add the last setting after, is this the custom? Okay, after custom is absolutely fine. So we can just do a comma here and we can start with spacing. Here it is. And for the spacing as default, it's actually set the padding and the margin is actually set to false. So we just need to enable it. To do this, we can do padding and this needs to be turned into true. Then we can do comma. We want margin and this needs to be turned into true comma and then we can do different units so units is things such as oh this was nice the auto complete was really nice for this and all i need to do is save and this is gonna make it look nice so the units um the pixels m's rems vh the vw and percentages of course you can remove some of them if you don't want to but these are all the units and i'm going to show you how this works now if i was to save this go back to the page refresh all right, now if I was to click on any of the elements here, you might not be able to see it yet. And this is because not all elements can have paddings and margins. I think the headings, if we click on them, you can go to dimensions here and you can actually change the margin if you wish. And you can unlink it if you want to change the top. Uh, what is this? The right, bottom and left. And you can see here we have pixel. But if I click on it, we have percentage, M, rem, v, VW and VH. So you can change the margin here, but let me show you the padding as well. So for example, I could use a group for this example. So let's drag a group. I'm going to drag it here on top. And for the group, if I click on it, you will see that inside here we have dimensions and we have padding. So on this group, uh, let me add a background color of black. And then as you can see here, we have padding. So I can add 20 pixels this is and it doesn't seem to be doing anything maybe we can add it more okay here we go this added 40 pixels i can go 60 and this adds padding of course i can unlink it and just do it uh to the top so i can do 10 to the top uh right it can be just i don't know six whatever or zero and so on so we can unlink it and do whatever we want but also if we click on here we can enable margins as well so I can enable margins and do exactly the same thing here. 
10 or let's say 100. As you can see, this moved everything. So the margins and paddings are now working and this can be quite helpful when you design your layout. I'm gonna remove this and remove this block and consider this part as done. All right, let's update this. And let's have a look at the next option, which is border. Border is somewhat similar. So if you want to enable the border, for example, you might want to add a border on a container, we can do that. So to enable the border, we need to jump back into settings here and I can go after the spacing, I can go here. So I can do comma, border. I believe that everything is turned into false. So we just need to do exactly the same thing as here and turn everything into true. Open and close curly brackets and inside the curly brackets we open and we start with, for example, the radius and instead of false, we do true. Comma. After this, we can do color. True. After this, we can do style and then this can be true. And then the last one is going to be width and we can put this to true as well. Save this. Let's go back to the page, refresh, and let's have a look on what we can add border. Okay, maybe we can't add border on this. Uh, maybe the button, let's have a look. If I click on the button. Yeah, we can add border on the button, for example. So let's say we want border radius. As you can see, this changes the button. Um, what else can we do? I'm sure that you can do a lot more things. Uh, maybe not, maybe not here. Let's add a group or something. Yeah, I need to unclick this, click plus and then group. Okay, I'm gonna add a group here. And then for the group, let's just change the background color to this pale pink. And let's click on it and then let's have a look. Okay, we get a lot more options now. Now we have the width. So let's say I want this to be four. As you can see, this is making it bolder. And let's say we want to change the style to dotted or dashes or dots, something like that. And then of course we have the option for color. So I can change the border color to red. Then we can also mess with the radius in here like so. And this is the border done. That's pretty much it. And let's delete this and move to the next part. So I'm going to remove this group, update, and let's have a look what we have next. All right. We're actually done with the settings now and we can look into adding some more styling. So for the styles, let's look into how we can add color. So for example, you might want to change your background color and you might want to change the text color. So what I'm gonna do is let's go back to the theme, go back to styles here. Uh, if you go down, you'll find styles and anywhere in styles, we can even write it here on top if you wish. We just need a comma. What I'm gonna do is select color and just make sure that you have comma. So I'm gonna have this on top here. And for the color, as you can see, we have background, gradient, and text. For the background, let's choose one of our variables. So I'm gonna do var, and this is gonna be dash dash, wp dash dash, preset dash dash color. And this is gonna be dash dash white. So this is a default white color that comes with WordPress, but of course, feel free to change to whatever you like. And let's add one more. And this is going to be the text. So I want to change the text color to the one that we added. And this is going to be variable. And then inside here, we can do dash dash WP dash dash preset dash dash color dash dash paperless black. Let's save this and let's have a look whether we can see the difference. Now this should be black. And now if I refresh, uh, I can't really see the difference, but I'm hoping that this changes. I can always inspect it, I guess. Um, font size. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can just change it to something uh, like, let's say, red, for example. Uh, refresh.
All right, so as you can see, now the text is red. And for some reason, I was refreshing quite a lot and it wasn't working. So sometimes you're going to have to refresh a couple of times. But as you can see, this is now red, which is good. And I can put it back as the way it was. All right, this was the original, so paper is black. And if I was to refresh, as you can see again, let me just save it one more time. Again, it's not refreshing, which is a little bit weird. Maybe I can copy this. Paste in a new tab. Nope. Maybe I can change the background color to red. Let's have a look. Save. No. Okay. So maybe I can do Control and Five, F5. Oh, okay. Control and F5 worked. So as you can see, the background is now red and the text is now the color that we wanted from the variable. Hopefully, if I go back now, Control and Z twice, save this. And if I refresh, okay, the refresh just doesn't seem to work. But if I do Control and F5, uh, that worked earlier. Come on. I'm going to make some more changes. So uh, save, save one more time, save. Refresh, refresh, control and refresh. Come on. Okay, here we go. After so many refreshes, it actually worked. So I don't know whether this is like some sort of a caching problem or a bug, but as you can see, it's now working. And all I did was hit refresh million times. All right, you'll be glad to hear that the last thing that I'm going to do in this video is to change the button because I don't like the default button. In my design, all of the buttons are square, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is another style element. All right, as long as we're in style, we can actually target different blocks. So what I mean by this is that button is an actual block. If I go to the editor, inside here are the blocks. So there is styles for pretty much all of the blocks, but they're also limited. So the button is a block that we can definitely target. Let me show you how we can do that. If I go back, let's go into styles. So where is that? All right, styles here. Let's just go back to the bottom here. So we need to put a comma and then inside here, we can do, we can do blocks and inside the blocks, we can then target different blocks such as the button. So to do this inside the curly brackets here, we can do core. And then as you can see, these are the ones that we can target. And in this situation, we're going to target the core button, press OK. And inside here is where we're going to put the settings, All right? So for the button, I want to target the actual border and let's do border. And inside here, we can target the color and I'm going to set it to the current color. And also let's target the border radius. So here it is radius. And I can just put this as zero. Do I need to put pixels? Probably not. All right, let's save this and see whether this makes any changes. Uh, this is the button here, the original button. We refresh. We refresh and nothing happens. I wonder whether I need to put pixels. One sec. So zero pixels, save this and refresh. Okay, either way, it doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I can do Control and F5. All right, I think that this is going to be one of them things that you're just going to have to, for some reason, it's just not refreshing. Maybe I can put the question mark again. I'm pretty sure that this should work. I'm going to keep refreshing. And yeah, maybe write something else. 12 pixels, refresh, save. No, let's write zero. This should work. Unless I uh, modified the actual button. Did I modify the actual button earlier? Oh, okay, okay. This is my fault. It's because I set a custom radius to this button. And now, of course, this is going to uh, follow the actual settings on here. Okay, sorry about this. What we can do is drag a new button. That hasn't been modified. Of course, I could have reset that one as well. I'm going to drag it here. And where did you go? What happened? Okay. Button and drag one inside here. Okay. Button. So this is a default button, right? No padding, no radius, nothing has changed. I'm going to update this. Let's go back to the page and refresh. 
Okay, sorry about that. So this is the default button. If I was to change the radius to 12, let's say, pixels, this should modify. All right, what about if I was to drag a new button? So I don't know whether this is a bug, but I'm gonna refresh this one more time. Oh, okay, interesting. So this, all right, so now that I've changed this to 12, this is working, but the front is not working. And I can, okay, it worked. And I can guarantee you that it's just one of them things that it wasn't refreshing for some reason. I don't know if I'm having a caching problem, but it's good that you are seeing this as well. But anyway, so this is actually working. And now if I put it to zero, let's say zero, let's go back to this page and refresh it. This now has no border radius. And if I go to the front page, refresh, Okay, he's doing the same thing again, but hopefully if I maybe save something on the page, test, maybe that would uh, clean it up. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this will work, but anyways, let's continue and let's do some of the other stuff. So for example, I want to change the color and a little bit of the spacing of this button. So what we can do inside the core button, we have the border, but then after the border, we can set a color. So comma, color and then inside here we can do background and then for the background let's just say red for this and for the text let's just say uh pink it's gonna be hard to see and we need to put comma save this let's go back okay yeah this is working so for the background let's do the real background which is variable dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash color dash dash paperless dash black and that's it and for the text i'm gonna do i'm gonna do var and then inside here dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash color and then dash dash paperless white so save it let's refresh Okay, this is looking good. This is actually working now. And I wanna do a couple of more things. We can actually define the spacing. So for the spacing, let's go under color, comma, and then inside here we can do spacing. And spacing is basically kind of like the padding top, right, bottom, and left. So we can start with the uh, top. Can we do that? Spacing, oh, we need to put padding, sorry. Spacing, padding. And then inside here, we can do top. And then top can be 0 0.7 m um, space, comma. And then we can do right. Right can be 1.6 m. Then bottom, which can be 0 0.7 m. And then we can have left, which is gonna be 1.6 m. And we forgot the comma in here. Perfect, let's have a look whether this works. Okay, the button changed slightly, that's how I want it. We can also change the topography for the button. So instead of spacing, we can go outside here and we can do, as you can see, we can do topography. And inside the topography, we can do font size. And inside here, we can bring a variable. So this is gonna be the regular font size. So which should be 16 pixels in all case, but it's also one RAM. So, dash dash wp dash dash preset dash dash font size dash dash regular okay then we can bring the font weight which can be uh, set to both or we can bring a variable i'm just gonna actually put 800 in here then because i don't think that i have a variable for this yet but then for the line height we can use the regular one i believe so var dash dash wp dash dash custom dash dash line dash height dash dash normal okay and to be honest that should be good enough okay i'm not sure about the boat now all right maybe we remove the boat and change it to the normal so i'm just gonna remove this line sorry about that save it and remove it i'm not gonna mess around with it anymore and for now we should be good to go and start developing some of the components for the website but also later on, we might come back to the styles and modify things as we need to. 
All right, now we can start looking into developing some of the sections starting with the header. On the header, we are gonna have a menu and we're gonna have a few pages. So for this, I'm gonna go back to the actual dashboard of the website, go to pages and let's create two more pages. So the first page I'm gonna do is about, and let's just say this is the about page. Let's publish this. Let's go back and create one more. And this is going to be the contact page. Let's publish this as well. And let's go back and refresh. Okay, we have the pages in here. And now we can start building our header. So if you remember at the start of the tutorial, we created a few parts in here. Inside the parts folder, we have a footer and we have a header. At the moment, they're empty, but we're going to be actually using the full site editing tool to build them and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's go back and click on appearance and then editor. If you click on the WordPress logo here and then template parts, you will see that we have the footer and we have the header. I believe that we actually need to register those parts as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you go back to Visual Studio Code and the themes, we need to be outside the styles or the settings. So it's going to be a brand new object. And we can do this at the end, I guess. And we can just do comma. And inside here, this is going to be custom parts. And for the custom parts, we need to register two of them. The first one is going to be the header. So this is going to be name, header. And then we need the area, which is going to be header. And we also need title, which is going to be header like so. And for the other one, is let's we might as well add the footer now. So I'm going to comma. And then this is going to be footer. Let's copy it, paste in here three times and just change the title. Okay, we should be good to go. And now if you go back and refresh this, okay, we should be good to go. So if I was to edit, let's start with a header. To edit the header, you need to click on this link here. And this will open the editor. Sometimes the editor looks like this. And if you want to open the settings, all we have to do is click on the cog here. And if you want to open the actual list view, you can click it on here. And that makes it a little bit better in my opinion. Let's add a group. So I'm going to add a new block. This is going to be group. Let's drag it in. And the reason I'm adding a new block is because I want this block to inherit the default layout, which I talked about early in this tutorial. And as you can see, this uh, contains the header now, so it's not full width. And inside this, we can add another element and that's gonna be a row, for example. Um, let's add it inside. And inside the row, we can start by adding a logo. So let's grab the logo like so. And we can upload the logo right now. If you click on this here, let me drag that in. I've already prepared a few assets from my design, a few images, and the logo is actually PNG. But of course, if you have an SVG, use SVG instead because it's going to look much sharper. So I'm going to drag this in. I know it doesn't look good, but here it is. It's uh, just the paperless logo that I've made. I'm going to copy this. This is the 146 is the width of the logo. So I'm going to select it. Now make sure that this is the image width is set to 146. It looks a little bit blurry to me, but uh, we can always fix this later on. Uh, I'm going to leave the default styles here with everything. And this is an important one. I would leave this on. So link image to homepage. We want when we click on the logo to go to the homepage. And I'm not going to touch anything else. This is good enough. We can save this. And now let's add navigation. For the navigation, all we have to do is click on the row here and just click on add block. So let's do nav. And it might ask you to create a new navigation, but because I was playing around with this, I think that message is now gone. But other than that, it's exactly the same. All I need to do now is click on the plus sign. And this is going to pop up with the pages that we already have. So I'm going to insert the home page. I'm going to insert the about page and I'm going to insert the contact page. Here they are. But I also want a little bit of space between them. And I find that really hard to do in here. It's almost impossible. In fact, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong, but it seems to be very hard. And the way I managed to do it is by going to the list view and then adding something here. Oops, we have a custom link as well. So I'm going to remove this. 
and we have the three links now. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of space between them. So I'm going to add a new block. Here it is, spacer. And as you can see, the spacer is now added and it does it um, horizontally. So we can change the width to 26 or something like this. Then we can duplicate the spacer by doing either just uh, click on the three dots here and duplicate, or you can do control shift and D that will work as well. And here is the new spacer. I can drag it down and we have a little space between the items. Now, the next thing that we need to do is align the objects. So the logo and the navigation, we have them here. And what we can do is click on the row and we can use the justification uh, tool in here. So we can justify them to the middle, we can justify them to the right, left, and so on. But this option here is if you're familiar with Flexbox, this is basically gonna push both items, one to the left and one to the right, which is exactly what I want. Just like so, so the menu is on the right side. Uh, we can allow the wrap on multiple lines if you wish and that should be good the next thing that we need to focus on is the menu let's click on the navigation and let me show you some of the options so again you can justify things here if you wish to you can allow wrap to multiple lines and you can change the hamburger menu so if i go to mobile you see that this changes to a little hamburger menu which is pretty cool it doesn't look the best and there is not much you can do about it, I guess, unless you do a lot of CSS. But if you click on it, it expands with the pages that we have. And to be honest, it's not so bad. I guess you can add other elements in here to make it a little bit better. So what I'm going to do, close this. And let me just show you that you can change this to uh, menu to say menu instead, or you can have the icon. You can't have both of them, unfortunately. And I'm going to leave it as it is. Of course, you can change the color, the font size and so on. Maybe the font size can be a little bit bigger, but I don't have one now. I think I've only have the regular. I'm going to leave it as it is. The next problem that we're having is the spacing on the left side and the right side. That's actually a little bit of an issue. And let me show you what I mean. So if I drag this here, I'm going to link you uh, to this page as well on GitHub, which the issue is open, but it's kind of hard to have like padding on the side here while if you want to have a full width website with background colors it's kind of hard to have the padding on the side as you can see on the header here i don't have any padding there are many dirty tricks that you can do to fix it but there isn't i, I haven't been able to find a good solution but anyways i'm going to show you what i'm going to do and what worked for me and let me show you super quickly the first thing that we can do, which is the most obvious thing, is to click on the row on the group or the group and start adjusting the padding. So I could unlink here and let's say we want from top to be 20 and we want the what 20 and let's say I want the left side to be 10 and the right side to be 10. Now that's okay-ish. That could work in some situation that might not work. Uh, but also it's not super flexible because uh, you might want to have it a little bit more responsive so the value changes in a way. All right, instead of zeros, actually, let's remove those values. And I'm going to show you something very strange right now. If I was to grab the row super quickly, and if I was to change the background color, let's say we want it to be, I don't know, this pink color. Look at what happened. For some reason, this is adding a lot of padding to the left uh, and the right. And actually it's adding to the top and the bottom, but because I've overridden it here, it's not affecting. So if I was to remove the top, uh, I don't think that you can see it, but okay, it's, there is still padding, right? If I was to remove this one as well, there is still padding. But if I was to remove it, remove the background, no padding at all. So this is a little bit annoying and a little bit weird. I'm sure there is a good explanation to it, but I mean, I can see why it's happening, but it's a little bit weird. So what we can do, is use this technique to add padding to the left and right, top and bottom. But I'm gonna customize the top and bottom to 20, just in case, just in case. And I don't like the space on the left and the right. So what we can do is modify this with CSS later. So I'm gonna show you this in a second. But first, let me save this. All right, one thing that I noticed is that the header does not match the content and and the footer here as well so before we continue i quickly want to look into this and see what's happening i think my trick of adding padding uh, is kind of failing here but we'll have a look now so i'm gonna go edit site super quickly 
and all I want to look into is the header. So I'm going to click toggle here and then go to templates. Sorry, it's template parts and then header. Let's edit the header super quickly and have a look. What I think it is, is that I didn't add the background color on this section, but I've added it on the row instead. And I think that this is actually messing up everything. So if I was to remove the background from here, maybe my trick is not the best, I'm not sure, but this seems to work now. So I'm gonna go to group and put the background color in here like so. And now this is actually adding quite a lot of uh, padding. So I'm gonna have to modify the top and bottom myself. I'm gonna put 20 if that's possible and 20 at the bottom and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe it's the row that I need to modify. Yep, okay. Zero, or we, in fact, we just remove it. We just remove it and that should be it. Save it. Let's go back and boom, that seems to work. If I was to inspect it, yeah, perfect. All right, now if I go home and now we have all header done. So this is actual reusable block that we can, we can even copy this actually, let me show you. And we can add it to our parts. So if you ever wanted to hand this to somebody else or you want to install the theme on another website, you can literally paste this in here. This is how it works. This is basically for the editor, how things are displayed inside the editor. As you can see, it adds a lot of like uh, kind of like inline styles, but then those in those styles are also done on the actual div. So they can be rendered on the front end, if that makes sense. So you can have this now and you can give it to anybody and they should be able to drag and drop this part of the website. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back super quickly to template parts, um, as you can see, this is modified. If I was to clean all of the modifications, that would have wiped out my whole header. But because I saved it already in here, then it's just gonna default to this, which is great. So I'll definitely suggest you doing that. And now let's have a look at how we can install the header on some of the pages. So for example, we can go to templates, go to page and inside here is where we can insert the header. Uh, let's add and then oh, I think this is part and I think that we need to do part. This is a little bit confusing here, but we need to do part and then we can choose part. And then here is the header. So I can choose the header from here and here it is. I can go to the list view and move it up. How do I move it up? Oh, yeah, I'll just try it. Here we go. We have the header. Let's save it and let's go back to the website and have a look at what's happening. All right. This is looking great. We have a little bit of space. The logo is looking a little bit blurry for some reason, but I'm sure that we can fix this in a second. But that's looking good. And if I inspect it and go down to mobile super quickly, you will see that this is also working. We have the buttons and so on. So in order to fix this gap, and use the background color to kind of create this padding here on the left and right. What we can do is inspect this and have a look at what's happening. And what I found out that an easy fix could be to use this here, where WP block grip that has background and we can modify it. So if I was to copy this, I can go to or code editor, go to style.css and add it in here. And essentially, I mean, we could modify those values or I can just do, um, let's say padding left, for example, I can do 16 pixels if I wish to, and then padding right, I can do 16 pixels and that would kind of fix the issue. If I was to go back, let's refresh super quickly. And I don't think that the styles are kicking in. So one way to see whether the styles are working, they should be, is to do control and new style.css oh here it is and if i click on it super quickly see that the styles are not there so if i refresh here here are the styles now they are here all right we have the styles now when i refresh and if i go back super quickly and refresh okay this is now working it's moved a little bit and i'm just gonna quickly try to fix the logo i believe that if i zoom out to 100 percent it's yeah so it's because I was zoomed in and this is a PNG. That's why we should be using SVGs, I guess. But as you can see, it's actually looking pretty nice now. The next thing that we can do is create butter for a website. 
and I'm not going to waste too much time on it just because you already know how to create templates now. So let's quickly jump on the editor here, template parts, and then footer. Let's start by adding a group. And this group, we need to click on inherit the full layout. And I'm thinking in this group that we just add a logo. So side logo, here it is actually. And I'm going to leave it as it is. And if we open the list view here, maybe we can add another group with columns. There's so many ways of doing it. I don't know which is the right way or the wrong way, but let's go and add another block. And this is going to be group again. Okay. And inside this group, we can add columns. So for example, let's just drag that in. And for example, we can choose 33% for, so three of them, three columns. And I need to click again, I guess. And here they are. And for this, I was just thinking that we add a bunch of links. So you can do whatever you like, but I'm just going to add a list item here. And I'm just going to say link one, link two, link three, and so on, link four and so on. So I want to keep it simple here and I can potentially duplicate this control shift and D and this duplicates it. And if I grab this handle here, I can drag it to the next row and then I can duplicate this one more time and drag it to the next row. Now, of course, feel free to do whatever you like. And for this second block, this doesn't need to be inside this one. I'm going to pull this out. Come on, get out. Okay, I need this out. Okay, this is working now. And I'm going to put this one down. Can I usually, you can just, okay, here it is. If you click on this, on the group, you can click down and this will put the group down if you're struggling to drag it up and down. And what I wanted to do in here is obviously I need to inherit the default layout. We could have just put everything in one group, I guess. So we don't have to do that, but it doesn't matter too much. And the next thing I want to do is if you wanted to add a little bit of a color here, we can do, here we go. And that adds a little bit of padding, which sometimes we don't actually want. So save this. And the last thing that I wanted to do is add a little bit of a copyright to the bottom. So I'm going to do another groove. And then inside here, we can add two elements. Maybe we can add a row. And inside the row, we can add a paragraph. And I'm going to say, I'm going to copy a copyright symbol. And I'm going to say 2022. Ready. And then I'm going to copy a dot element here and then say build with WordPress and then we can maybe link the RSS. So the RSS feed link is usually post dash sitemap.xml but I'm not sure whether you need to install the SEO plugin. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. It's just an example. So I'm going to use it like so. We can also link this to WordPress, but for now, I'm just going to use it. I'll empty link like so and leave it. The next thing that I want to do is add another item in here. And maybe we can just say something like cookie, cookie policy and link this as well. I'm going to link it to a, to nothing pretty much, but I just want it to be a link. And then we can use the old trick where we space, uh, we justify stuff between and we can allow wrapping as well so this is fully responsive now i don't fully like how those two elements are touching so potentially on the top one here maybe i can give it a little bit of padding uh, let's have a look i can do that into the bottom 20 pixels like so it's saving okay that's looking okay a little bit boring with the colors now let's have a look at how this photo looks on the actual website so if you go to the website right now we don't have the footer, we only have the header. So let's go to edit site, click on the WordPress logo, go to our template, we can go to page, and then we can just drag another one, template part. I'm just gonna drag this at the bottom, and then we can choose, and then we can choose the footer here. Okay, so this isn't too bad. The only thing I forgot to do is to put this inside, so I'm gonna save it. Working a little bit slow for some reason. 
Maybe I can restart the server in a sec. And let's go to the website. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, and as you can see, we have the logo and we have three columns. And if I was to put this for, to mobile, you will see that they're stacking out the columns and so on. But obviously, there are a couple of issues. This needs the padding, so I can do the trick with the background. And this needs to go inside because it's full width. So let's do that. First of all, let's go back and give this group whatever it's inside. Ooh. So I'm not sure where this is going to work. Uh, let's see if I can add background to this. Okay, that works straight away. And he added a little bit of padding. That already looks good. And for this row here, oh, that needs to be inside the group. I can try to drag this in. Okay, perfect. And now on this group, I can click it, inherit the default lap, save. Let's refresh the front. And that's looking professional. I would also add a little bit of space for this, actually. It looks quite, quite bad like that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, where is it? Here is the editor. I can close this one, actually, so we don't get confused. And for this one here, I'm going to add a little bit of padding. Maybe we add, where's the padding? Here it is. Maybe we add padding of... Uh, 20 to the top, and maybe we add padding of 60 to the bottom and save. Let's refresh this. And this looks a lot better. Now, one thing that I spotted right now, actually, which I totally forgot about, is the links. As you can see, these are the default link colors, and we can actually change them as well through the JSON file. Let me show you how we can do that. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Inside the theme.json, we can go and target the link element, just like we targeted the headings. So inside elements, we can scroll down to the bottom here. Uh, we can do comma, and then we can target the link. So inside the link, we can target the, uh, we can target quite a lot of stuff actually, but once I do one, hopefully, as you can see, you have active state, focus state, hover state, border, and so on. I'm just gonna do the color super quickly. So this is gonna have text, double quotes, text like so and we can just put a variable so this can be the this can be the the main color which is which is the paperless black oh i can see it here so i can copy this one here and paste it and do that and now actually thinking about it let's let's change anyway and let's refresh and as you can see, the links are now the black color, which is great. And of course, feel free to do the hovers and so on. So we have a beautiful header. We have a beautiful foot in here. And now we can concentrate on the homepage. All right. And let's not forget to actually save our footer because if we go back, uh, let's go back here, template parts, and we have the footer. So if you were to clear customization this is gonna wipe out everything and your footer will be gone so i'll definitely su suggest you to go to the footer and oh this might be can i copy all of them let's have a look uh, i'm not sure if this is gonna happen let's have a look. copy and uh, i'm gonna paste this in the footer uh block color yeah i think yeah, I think that has done it. Maybe I should have done it in one block. That would have been fine as well. But yeah, that's done it. So technically speaking, if I was, I'm going to show you super quickly. If I was to go back, template parts, and clear all customization, this is going to remove everything and set it as default, whatever is in the HTML. So if I was to refresh now, the footage should be exactly the same as it was. But if I was to remove this, and just put rad, let's just put rad and refresh it, as you can see, rad. But yeah, that's how it works. Definitely a good suggestion is to save your blocks just in case you clean them out. And now, as you can see, this is as default. And I've actually done the header as well, so I can potentially clear any customization. And if you ever want to do customization on top of the default header that you have a footer, you can do them and they'll be saved in the database. And as you can see, you'll have this little dot and so on. I hope this makes sense. The footer should be back and we can now focus on the top area of the homepage. All right, so now that we're done with the page template, we only have a header and the footer. All of the pages 
should be exactly the same. So if I was to click on about, you'll see that we have the header and we have the footer. If we click on contact, we have the header and the footer, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. And I wouldn't worry too much about this being full width. Now, the reason I've done it this way is because if we edit this page, then we have the option to have stuff full width and we have the option to have things constrained just like the layout is right now. And one thing that I noticed now is that the pattern is a little bit different here, but I can always change this later on. Uh, let me close this and let's focus on the home page. So if we go to edit page, let me remove Visual Studio Code as well. So if we click edit page, let's remove all of the items from here. So we have a group just because this group is uh, containing everything in the middle of the website. If you want to fool it, you untick this. And then inside this group, we have all of the stuff that we don't need anymore. So I'm going to click delete if that's possible. No, should be possible. Remove blocks. Here we go. So we're starting blank. Let me update this and let's go to the home page. All right, we're starting blank now and let's build. The first thing that I want to do is kind of like a big hero image. And for that, we could use the cover block. Let's click on this and search for cover. And cover is basically an image with text on top of it. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to upload a new image. And the image that I want to upload is here in the post. For some reason, they're not popping up. Here they are. So the image I want to use is going to be this one. And they will be linked in the description below. Uh, let's open it and as you can see the image is looking pretty cool and I can write some text now inside here I can pretty much drag anything this is a paragraph and I'm gonna just write some text let's say explore the most beautiful places to visit this summer and we can also change the color of this if you wish to white let's say this is this is a paragraph so we can definitely put a custom size of one I'm not sure whether we need this. Maybe we can do a 1.2. All right, this is looking great. And let's add a heading, for example. Heading like so. And there is another way of adding stuff as well. I forgot to show you, but I'm going to show you in a second. So for the heading, let's say we type, I'm going to copy and paste some places to visit this summer. I can center line this and I can text, I can do text white. If this works, yep. That seems okay. One thing that we can do is if we click on the actual cover, this is really cool. You can uh, have a fixed background. You can have a repeated background. And also you can change the focal point here. So if I wish to, I can change it like so. So it looks a little bit better maybe. And let's have a look. update. And the other thing that I want to change is this looks a little bit too dark for my liking. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see opacity. So we can change the... Uh, overlay of this which is great and I can just change the opacity like so but now we might have a little bit of an issue with the color combination because as you can see actually this is really clever it tells you that the color combination isn't great for uh, readability stuff so potentially let's have a look I'm not sure if I like it with black I would rather do this and maybe make it a little bit darker but obviously you can mess around with it so update this let's go to the home page and let's have a look. As you can see, this is contained, which is actually fine. This is how I had on the original design. But the good thing about that, the stuff that I've done so far is that we can always go back and we can always go outside this group. So if I was to go outside this group, okay, like so. And if I give this to be, um, instead of none, I can give this to be full width. Let's update it. And this is another way of, and this just gives you more options, I guess. And I can always adjust the image a little bit because it doesn't look that great now. So I can adjust it like so, update, and let's refresh. Maybe there is a fine line here, I guess, because it's so stretched um, in my, okay, that looks fine, I guess. But the only problem with the full width here is that if you have a big 4K monitor, it might not look as great. So I'm going to leave it as it is. You know how to have a box anyway. Okay, let's go back and have a look at something else. Let's add a button as well. So for example, we can press enter. And uh, this is what I wanted to show you. If you do slash, you can actually start typing what block you need, which is really helpful. So I'm going to need a button and I can just press enter and just let's say raid 
more like so and we should be able to adjust this button so that's middle and justify center perfect so that's what we want of course we can modify this a little bit i think this needs to have a little bit of space below if that's possible and no i probably need to have it in contain in a container maybe i can do a little bit of margin on the button instead let's have a look uh no not allowed so these are the things that you're gonna have to look into and work out i guess maybe that's a good idea maybe i can just put a little bit of space so i can do type spacer or separator space i think it will be better i can just do this so this won't be visible on the front end it's just gonna make some space um the text isn't perfect obviously but uh you can always work it out if you when you have the time all right, that's, that's good enough. Obviously mess around to make it perfect. And let's move on to the next section, which is the actual blog post. Now I actually don't have any blog posts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go back to the dashboard and then I'm gonna add a couple of posts with some images and some categories. So let's add a new, and let's say my first blog post. We need to have a category, for example, let's say holiday. Uh, is this gonna work? Yep, that's absolutely fine. Tags, uh, yeah, let's add some tags. Actually, I'm only gonna do it on the last one, so we don't have to do it on all. So I'm just gonna add an image for this and let me drag an image. I didn't actually prepare too many images, so I'm gonna drag two images here that I can use. And I can just maybe repeat them a couple of times just to save time. Okay, I'm just gonna add this one here. Obviously add your alt text and so on and insert. This is the first post. Let me, I'm not gonna write anything here as well. I'm just gonna do one blog post that has pretty much everything inside it. So first one, let's have a look. This is just another blog post. And I'm gonna set another image here, maybe this one, publish. And uh, that's absolutely fine. Maybe I can just do, I don't know. Maybe I can just do Australia, update it, go back, refresh. And I'm just gonna have to do this a couple of more times. I'm sorry about this. All right, this is gonna be the last one that I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna copy some text for this blog post to make it look presentable. And I'm gonna input some images. Uh, just so it's like a full blog post, you know? And then uh, we'll, we'll come back. I've just went to Wikipedia and just copied a little bit of text just so we have something on. So let's update this. And that's it. So we have a couple of blog posts here and we can go back to the homepage and look into how we can add them in here. So this is the actual homepage that we are editing earlier. Make sure that we are all up to date and saved. Okay. The way I'm thinking about this is that on the left side, I want to have all the blog posts and on the right side, I want to have a sidebar. In order for us to do this, what I'm thinking is that inside this group, potentially we can add a column. So I'm going to add co and the one I want is maybe 70, 30 and we can always further modify it later on. So this is looking okay. Maybe we need a little bit of padding on top so I can always click on the group here and just add padding on the top 20. We can always adjust it later on. And then for the left side, we can use a query loop, which is going to bring some blog posts for it. So query loop insert here choose pattern for the query loop or start blank let's have a look at the patterns so okay so this is kind of like listed which doesn't look bad at all uh maybe we can try this one uh this one looks very good so this is you know what i really like this one so i'm gonna use this one here uh originally i was thinking of something um oh that looks that looks really nice as well you know what, I'm gonna go for this one because this one looks nice. So what I'm gonna do, let's choose this query loop. And this is going to loop a few articles for us, blog posts. 
So there are a couple of things that we need to modify in here. As you can see, it doesn't look that great. But what we can do, we can click on this button here, the display settings, and we can start modifying. For example, uh, we might want to have four block posts. And now this is going to give us four block posts and so on. But also what I don't like is how this is all squished. So we can always, I think that we can just drag this in. Let's have a look. Okay, so if you click on one of the columns, there are two columns here, one, two. So if you click on one of them, we can adjust the width. So what I'm thinking is, if I was to do this, that's looking okay, but that doesn't seem to look okay. I'm gonna put this. I probably should have calculated this, to be honest. Or does it just squish the other one? Let's have a look. 39 and 64. No, so maybe that can be 20, 30, and that can be 70. All right, there needs to be a little bit of balance, so maybe we can go to uh, 60, and this can be 40, right? And also, we can also modify the image here. So if I was to click on the column, I believe that if we click on the actual image here, we can actually change the width and the height. So what we can do is if I was to change the height to this, I know it's going to, uh, it's actually not squishing it, it's good, it's uh, covering. So potentially we need to find, let's say 400, we need to find a sweet spot for this. And uh, Let me just quickly save and see how it looks. Maybe we just need to and this is a little bit of a tricky situation, but what we can do is let's try to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it uh, H4 potentially or H3. H3 looks good. The image feels a little bit better now. Uh, maybe we can say, uh, maybe we can say cover. That's absolutely fine. And if I click on this column here, maybe we can align everything in the middle. I think that's going to make everything look a little bit better. We can definitely also go to those... Uh, which column is it? Those two columns, and we can modify them a little bit. Um, maybe we can make this one a little bit smaller. So instead of 33, let's go with 25. And does this need to be changed? Let's have a look. 25. Okay, that might just work if I update it and refresh the page. Yeah, okay, that's, you know what? That's looking much, much better. Now, the next thing that I want to do inside here, I also want to bring in the categories and maybe we can add read more link. So to add read more link, as you can see, we can just put read more like so, and that should just work. Show link on the new line, that's absolutely fine. And the post data is absolutely fine, but I also want to bring the post category. So to do this, we can add new post category here we go post category and we can just drag this in here we go it says australia i think there is a lot of space and where what's happened to the image don't know what's happening to my images maybe i need to update and refresh okay the images are back that's good so that doesn't look too bad but there are a couple of issues i want the image to be a little bit larger kind of like a square so I think, let me click on this and let's edit it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is make this a little bit like that, but also we're having a little bit of a problem with the exit here. We're going to have to fix this as well. Let me refresh. And basically I want less exit. Maybe we need to stop it around here. I'm not sure how many words this is, but we'll figure it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump back into Visual Studio Code and let's open the functions.php. So in order for us to limit the exit, we can write a custom function here and the function goes something like this function, give it a name. I'm going to call it exit length. And then inside here, we pass a variable of length. and done and then we need to return how many characters we want so let's try with 40 characters and then we'll fix it as we go along and also we need to add this add filter and then this filter is called exit length all 
And I should have called the function something else now because, all right, maybe we can do custom excel length. Sorry about this. And then we can trigger it here. We can reuse the name here because this was already excel length. I don't want to confuse it. Okay, so I'm going to copy a quick comment here and paste it. And I'm just going to give it a customizing the excel length, maybe with S. Cool. Let's refresh. And we have an error on line 50. And this is because I probably didn't close it. So let me close it, save and go back. And that's it. It's because I didn't close it. All right, the exit has definitely worked out a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is maybe go for 30. Uh, that's that's working for me. I think that should work. Maybe, maybe 25. I'm trying to be picky now. All right, this is working quite well, and I'm starting to like the way this looks. In fact, I do like it. I do like the way this works. Uh, it's looking pretty clean. So I might leave this the way it is. And of course, I didn't add any other any other text for the other post. But what I can do quickly is just add some Laura Ripson, which I actually have in hand. So I'm going to quickly speed up this video and show you. Right, now that I've added some content, look at how beautiful this looks like. Um, in fact, I was going to do some further modifications on this, and I might show you how to do it as well. But this is actually looking pretty good, to be honest. All right, the next step that I want to look into is the sidebar. So for the sidebar, we've kind of already created this uh, column here. If you look into, it's getting deep. But if we go down, you will see that we have, where is it, column here. All right, column on the left side and column on the right side. So inside this column, I want to kind of like make a little profile uh, for the writer that is doing the blog. So let's add, for example, an image. And I've already saved an image for this from my original design. So what I'm gonna do is drag this beautiful image, which I'm struggling to find. All right, here it is. It's gonna be this one, Coffee Girl, I called it. So I'm gonna add this. Uh, this can be aligned centered. So it's centered in the middle of the column like so. Maybe we can give it a little bit of a description. Let's make something up super quickly. I'm gonna add, if I can click on this, can I not? Uh, okay, no, I can't, uh, that's weird. But maybe I can do the plus sign and do a paragraph. And here we go, it adds a paragraph or we can do it for here. So what I was gonna do is maybe we just say, hi, my name is, my name is Laura. I am a professional professional writer and store and professional storyteller like so dot and then we can center line this to make it look nice and this is already looking nice actually uh, let me go to the right side and the next thing I was thinking of is to add a search bar here so oh did you see this plus sign somewhere oh oh Oh, here we go, it's popping up. So what I was gonna do is a search bar. We can just drag one in. Not gonna do anything with this. Uh, you can modify the, but it looks like you can modify the position of the button. Then you can use even a button icon. Oh, okay, that looks pretty cool, I like that. So we're gonna put this at the bottom here maybe. And instead of um, optional placeholder, let's see, maybe like search for articles. Dot, dot, dot. I think that would work. Uh, we can also change the colors and so on, but I'm going to leave it as it is. That needs to be aligned center just in case as well. And let's have a look at what else we can do. Maybe we can add some categories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little heading here and say categories. So for this, we might have to change it to something small. Let's see big H5, that would do. Categories looking good. And I can just do enter and then we can start typing categories. Okay, these are the categories that we added for the blog post. So they're looking good. So we can display this as a drop down, show the post count. I like that a lot. So I'm going to leave this on top level. No, I'm good. I think this is already looking good. 
but one thing that I don't like so much is the dots. Let me update this and see how our website is starting to look. But this is actually starting to look quite nice. Maybe I can do it a little bit of spacing here, but these are minor things. And I don't like how much, I don't mind the bullet points so much, but I don't like how much padding there is on the left side. And unfortunately, I don't think that there is a way of modifying this. So the only way I can think of is to actually inspect this and find what class is used. So for example, WP block categories is what we could potentially use to modify it. That means that if we modify the every single list with that class name, then this is going to be on the entire website, which I don't really want. So I actually want to make this little list unique. So what we can do is let's go back. And if we click on the actual category list, we can go to advanced and we can give it a specific class name that we can start. So for example, let's say category sidebar. Category sidebar, let's copy this and let's update it. Let's go to the homepage, refresh, nothing happens obviously. And let's quickly go to the quick, uh, to the editor. And then let's go to style.css and add it around here. So this is going to be a class name of category sidebar and we can just modify some of the margin and padding and remove the list out. So let's do margin of zero, padding of zero. And then we can do, if we want to remove the bullet points, we can do list style type and none. Save this. Of course, we can put nice informative comments in here, such as Right, category sidebar, and if I go back and refresh, um, nothing is happening. Let's have a look. Nothing is happening. I believe that this is because it's probably cached the CSS again. So let me try Control and F5. Okay, Control and F5 worked, but I also don't like the spacing between them. So maybe we can modify that super quickly. So we have a list, and uh, maybe we can just do. Maybe we can just do padding bottom on the list or margin, whatever. Let's have a look. Let's add this for now. So for category sidebar, we can copy this and we can do inside here. We have a list and for the list, we can do padding bottom of 10 pixels. For example, uh, let's, okay. This seems to work and we can modify just like this. And the only issue with uh, doing it this way is that if you go back to the actual editor and you refresh your backend website will not match with the front. As you can see, we still have the points, the bullet points here, but if you go to the front, we don't. So that's one of the downsides, I guess, but I would assume that, I, but I would assume that at some point we'll be able to modify absolutely everything and make the websites the way we want. The last thing that I wanted to do is play some sort of an advert here. So let's go back and add something else. So I'm going to do enter maybe. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And I can do image like so, and I can just upload the image that I've prepared for an ad. So maybe your block has an ad. I'm going to do this, have it in here, every center line. Of course you can link this to your ad. I'm going to put a link like so and press enter update. Here we are, we have a little add and the spacing is a little bit off. So definitely could add a little bit of space. Let me add spacer and we can just put this on top. Update. Mm, yeah, something like this, that would do the job. All right, our homepage is more or less done now. Of course, there is so many things that we could modify. And let me finish off by showing you how we can create the other pages and how we can create the block uh, page. So for example, for the other pages will be exactly the same as we done just here. So what you want to do is go to about, click edit page, and you can start adding columns and what's not. If you don't want your page to be full width, as I showed you earlier in this tutorial, you can go grab a group, and just tell this group to inherit the default layout. Now I can drag this paragraph in here inside the group. 
if I try, here we go. If I update it, and if we go back, you will see that the page is now here. And maybe we can uh, do this page as well later on, depending on how time goes. First of all, let's quickly look this into mobile view. So if I was to scale down, everything seems to work uh, and everything is stuck in. Uh, this seems to work quite well, but one thing that you notice is the spacing issue here as well. Let me remove this so you can see a little bit better. But yeah, the spacing issue is still there, which I really don't like. So what we're going to have to do is let's go back, uh, edit the home page, and click on which is it? I think we need to locate it. Uh, this this group here potentially. Yeah, if we give this group a background color of white, it gives us the little spacing. Let's go back, refresh. And now our website is a little bit more aligned, but now I like I would like this box to be a little bit wider, maybe. I'm not so sure. Maybe like so. I don't know. I'm being too picky now. I don't know. Maybe a little bit wider. It doesn't matter too much. You can always mess around with this and make it a little bit nicer. All right, before we continue with anything else, there are two other things that I wanted to show you. And one of them is that we can actually further modify this. We can add the order in here, we can add the date and things like that and also i totally forgot to add pagination so let me show you how we can do that if we go back to editing the site so i'm going to click edit site and the first thing that we can look at is how we can add more stuff in here so for example if you want to add the author you just drag the first author in here and that should work straight away you might not want to have the image you can just remove it and this will give you the author and the same thing you can do with a date so if I press enter, I can just start search for date like so, first date, and that would give you the date and so on. Let me just show you super quickly. It won't look very nice at the moment, but I could potentially put them in one row and fix some of the spacing. And I think that actually could look pretty nice. So these are things that you can further modify if you wish to, to make your site better, but I'm going to remove them now and save this and one last thing about this you can actually modify this through the teams.json file as well and this is called query loop so if you were to go back in visual studio code super quickly and open the team.json file locate where your blocks are so in styles blocks we have them in here as you can see the last one the top one we have is the latest post that we modified but inside here you can find some other settings for the query loop so if we do call slash query you can see that you can modify the actual query loop entire thing i believe then you can modify the pagination the pagination name numbers previous title quote uh pull quote and so on just to show you an example i haven't messed around with this too much but just to show you an example let's go with the query and inside here if you don't know what the options are obviously you can start typing double quotes and let's say we want to change the color Right, right, let's choose color. Inside color, we can do background, gradient, text. I'm gonna go for text and I'm just gonna put red for this example. So let's save this super quickly. Let's go back and refresh. As you can see, this is now changing the text as red. And I believe that you can do some modifications to uh, the other elements such as the title, but you will have to mess around and figure it out. All right, the next thing that I wanted to show you is how we can add the pagination. Now, the pagination is a little bit tricky to add. So what you have to do is go here, select the query loop. And inside the query loop, there is going to be this plus sign here. So hopefully, if you start searching for pagination, it should come up. It's sometimes uh, the first time I've done it, it just wasn't popping up for some reason. But if you select the query loop, then click the plus sign, it will pop up. And here it is. Of course, we can um, align middle and maybe we can justify it to the center like so. And also maybe we can just give it a little bit of padding on top. Can I do that? Um, nope. But it looks where you can change the arrows here, which is pretty cool. But you cannot give it any padding, which is which is weird, I guess. Um, what you can do is uh, put this into its own row and give the row a little bit of padding. Let's see how this looks anyway. It might be just fine. 
All right, this is just fine. Of course, you can uh, further modify this as well with the theme.json, as I showed you just a few seconds ago. But I think this should be good enough. All right, the next thing that we need to focus on is the actual blog post. So if I was to click on any of the current blog posts that we have, for example, this one here, you will see that we have empty template single post. This means that we need to modify our template and design it the way we want to display the information. Now, I've already got an idea how to do this. So if I show you quickly my design here, what I want to do is I want to have two columns, one on the left side here and one on the right. The right column is going to have the title. We're going to have by the, so the author, the date that it was created and, and manually I want to insert how many minutes this is going to take to read. And also on the left side here, I was thinking of something like table of content. I probably won't do this because that's going to need a plugin and it makes things a little bit more difficult, which you'll see in a second. But we can maybe uh, do the latest articles and maybe an advert and so on. So this is the plan. Let's jump into the website quickly and have a look what we need to do. So if we go back to the website, and click edit site. We need to navigate to the template so we can click on the WordPress logo here and go to templates and the one that we need to edit and the one that we need to edit is the single post. All right, let's click single post and let's start by adding the part. So I want to add the header and the footer. So part, template part, I'm going to click it twice. So we get two of them. And then if I select the first one here, I want to choose the header, choose that. And then for the second one, I want to choose the footer that we created earlier. So let's save this. All right, to bring in the post content, let's toggle the block inserter. And let's first of all group everything. So I'm going to create a group, click on this. And this group needs to be above, oops, needs to be above the footer and below the header. And I'm going to click inherit the full layout. So we have all layout in the middle. So inside here, is where we can add some of the article stuff, such as the title, let's say title, and we need the post title. So I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, this comes up with post title and we need one more. So let's click on the plus button and search for actually that's search for po post. All right. This is not working. We need to uh, maybe press enter and type slash and then post. What do we need? Post content. All right, this is going to bring the content and let's have a look what we have so far. So I'm going to save this and let's go back to the website. So if we click on the first article here, you will see that we're getting the title and we're getting the content from the blog post. And of course, if I edit the blog post, we can modify the title, the blog post and so on. So that's perfect. We don't have to do anything here. We can go back and we can continue developing all that. So what I wanted to achieve is the two columns. To do this, we can go into here and drag a column. Let's click on column and I'm going to go for 3070 and then we can modify it. So the left one, if I select the left column, this can be 25, just so we match the homepage and the right side can be 85, like so. I think that should be fine. And what we can do is put the title in here. So I'm going to grab the title and put it into the second column. And I also need to grab the post content into the second column here. All right, this is great, but this needs to be moved up. And that should be the first step. If we wanted to, let's refresh this. Okay, this is looking great. But if you wanted to create this uh, dead space in here, I don't know which way I prefer it, but if you wanted to create this dead space in here, we might have to create this in a separate column. What we can do is duplicate the columns here. And what I'm going to do is delete this post content from here and delete the title from here. So now we have an empty column here. We have the title and then we have the other column here. Let's add the advert for now. So I'm going to do image. And then the advert is this one here, select it and save. So if we were to refresh, this is kind of already looking like all design, but I want to center line this and I want to add the rest of the stuff. So let's click on the title. We can click here and align 
text center. That's the first step. And then on the left side, maybe we can add some more stuff. Let's add the, uh, you might also like, so I'm going to add a heading and say, you might, you might also like, and I'm just going to put the, I'm going to make this as H4, maybe H5. Yeah. H5 looks a little bit better. And then I was just going to do, now I was just going to do latest post like so, and that's it. So I'm going to move this at the top here and I'm going to move this as well and save. Let's have a look at what we get now. All right, we're getting close. And now one thing that it's going to be a big issue, obviously I want this part here to be part of the template. So we don't have to add it to every single blog post, but unfortunately we won't be able to do that. What I mean by this is those two values here. So they're coming from the database and they're dynamic. So they will work. I can make these, these two as a template and they will work. But this won't work because I need to modify this on every single article automatically. Let me show you what I mean. Let's develop this and we'll figure it out as we go. If we go back and develop the next section, so I'm going to go inside this column here, the top columns, inside the right side column, let's add a row. So I'm going to click here and let's look for rows. And inside the row, I was thinking of grouping every single element into its own container. And the reason for this is because I noticed that the auto block has the padding functionality, but for some reason the date does not, which is a little bit of a pain. So what I'm going to do is add everything into its own container. And to do this, we're going to have row and inside the row, we're going to have to have another row. So inside this row now we can add, let's say an image and media library. And I've already uploaded the three icons that we need. So this is going to be the user one. I'm going to select this. I did choose PNGs, but obviously if you have SVGs, that would be a little bit better. So what I'm going to do next to it here, if I can, uh, it's a little bit hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new block from here and I'm going to say author. So post author is the one I need and that's it. The important bit here is that we need to click on the row, the row, this one here, and we want to center align everything. So align middle. And also we want to justify item center. So they're in the middle here. That's great. What I can do is add a little bit of padding to this row. So we push the other item. So inside here, we have the row. Let's add a little bit of padding to the right. I couldn't figure out a better way of doing this, but this should work just fine. So I have some padding and now we can duplicate this. Let's do click, click here, duplicate or control shift and D. And now let's replace this with the date. It's a little bit hard. Okay. Let's change the image. First of all, replace and then open media, the date. Here we go. That's cool. And it's a little bit hard. Oh, here we go. I can now click here and do date. So post date is what I need and that's done. Let's add one more. So I can copy this row one more time, duplicate. And then inside here, we need to change the image, replace, go with the time and then let's go. So this has to be a paragraph because it's going to be written manually. So I'm going to add a paragraph and let's say this post takes nine minutes to read like so. But also because we added add into this row, they might be offset to the left a little bit. So what I'm going to do is click on this row and remove the padding on the last one. Okay. That looks like a little bit more centered. So if I was to save this and go back, so we have one problem here. I forgot to remove the image. Let's go back. Let's click on the post order and remove the image by toggling this off, save it. And let's refresh one more time. All right. This is not looking too bad. Actually, the only thing that I can spot is that none of these things are aligned well. So I'm going to have to fix that. Let's inspect it and see what's going on. If we go to the actual image here, bigger WP block image is the class name. You will see that this image is kind of like pushed down. What we can do is try to reset the line height on this class. So what I'm going to do is try line height and then zero. As you can see, this works. And now what we need to achieve is add the line height to this class name, but we also need to make it unique on only on this row. So I don't want this to be affecting every single WP block image. So what I'm going to do, let's grab this first of all, go to allstyles.css and somewhere here at the bottom inside here, we're going to do line 
height and set it to zero. Now to make this unique, what I'm going to do is on the click on the row here. So we need to be on the outside row, the one that's wrapping everything, this one here. And if we scroll down on the right side and we go to advanced, we can add additional class names. So what I'm going to do is add a unique class name for this row. So we're not affecting anything else on our website. So let's go with something like post information. And then we can copy this, save, and then let's go back to the style sheet and just paste this in front. So we are making this very unique. And this basically fixes the icon alignment. Let's save this and go back, refresh the actual page. And as you can see, this is looking a lot better. Let me show you the problem I was talking about earlier. As of now, this is dynamic coming from the database. This is dynamic coming from the database. So if the article was written in an earlier date, this will obviously change. But this was written with a paragraph which is not ideal. So this is going to be exactly the same on every single blog post. If I was to go to this one holiday in Austria, it's going to be exactly the same which is a little bit of a problem. So one thing that you can do is remove this altogether and this will be absolutely fine. Your template is going to be working well. If you want this on every single individual blog post, it's not ideal, but what I figured is that we can actually copy this row, copy here, and I can actually delete it from the template. So remove, save, I know it's not ideal. And now if I go to a blog post, for example, this one here, I can edit it and I can paste it. That's the only way I can think, the easiest way I can think, but it's also not the best way. So I can put this article takes 10 minutes to read, update, and we should be okay with this post. So if we go back, refresh. Okay, this is not too bad. Obviously, there is a little bit of a alignment issue that we can fix, but it's not a huge deal. I think that the, but that can be fixed. The issue is that now, if I go to another blog post, say this one, uh, it doesn't have it. So you have to kind of like copy and paste this every time, which is super annoying. So let's do it one more time just to show you. I can paste it in here uh, and I can say this is, I don't know, six minutes to read. And let's go back and boom, we have it ready. This was when the right article was written and we have six minutes to read. If I was to update the date, let's go edit post, that should automatically update. Let's say, this was published on the 5th, let's update. And here we go, it actually updated here automatically, which is great. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is just removing this. What I'm gonna do for now is just um, actually add it back here. And what I'm gonna do is remove the time. So, and just get rid of this. And that should be a little bit more dynamic. And now we don't have to, oops. And now we don't have to, now we're going to have a double, but we don't have to do this every time. So I'm going to remove it and let me go to the other article as well. Okay. This is the one that we want. So, oh, okay. That's absolutely fine. So the same goes for the table of contents. If I wanted to do that, I'd probably create a plugin or I'd use a plugin that is already developed. I don't, I haven't explored this, but you can search for plugins and maybe just drop one inside here and hopefully that will automatically pick up the headings of your site and populate it. I'm, I have seen quite a few plugins that do that, but I'm going to skip this part here. Now, if we were to go back to the website, the reason that I went with this design in particular is because I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated and show you some of the disadvantages that we have with the current editor. All right. So we have this column on the left side and we have this column on the right side. So what's going to happen is when we shrink the browser, this is going to be at the top and this is going to be at the bottom, which is not what we want. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to scale this down super quickly. And as you can see, oh, I forgot to add the padding as well. But as you can see, the title is at the top because we've added this in his own container and column. But then we have the sidebar here, which is not what we want. And then we have the actual article. I actually want to reverse those two columns when we hit mobile. And let me first fix the spacing and then we can figure out that. So if I go back super quickly, if we click on the group and if we add background, this is the hack that we're using today. Save and here we go. 
perfect. Now, if we inspect, go down, perfect. If we were to go back to the editor, you will see that there is nothing that we can use to flip those columns. I wish there was like a flex option in here somewhere that you can just say, all right, stack on mobile is pretty cool, but I also want to reverse in mobile and we can't do that, unfortunately. So what I'm going to have to do is add a custom class and modify it this way, unfortunately. Let's grab the column here, give it a class name. So I'm going to go here, advanced, and let's give it a class name here. I'm going to say flex. Reverse order. You can name it whatever you like, and I'm going to copy this and save. So if we were to go back and inspect all layout super quickly, you will see that these columns, have a look, these columns are actually already done as flex, and we have the class name here that we just added. And all we need to do is use flex direction and reverse them for mobile. Let's go and do that. Inside here, let's add another line, give it this class name of dot flex reverse order. In here, all we need to do is flex direction and we need to do column reverse. So let's save this and this is probably going to break the layout. Okay, as you can see now, this is at the top and the column is at the bottom. And the reason that this is breaking the layout is because it's telling that this is a column and this is a column, so they're just stacking. In order to fix this issue, we can wrap it in a media query that only works on mobile. So let's go back and wrap this in a media query. So at media, only screen, and, and then we put max width and something like 788 pixels. And then inside curly bracket, we wrap everything like so and push that in. So I'm going to copy a comment and say this fixes block post block post mobile order if i was to go back refresh you will see that this is working and if we toggle the mobile view let's go back let's go down sorry and we have this at the top we have the article just like the way it should be and so on so this is working perfectly fine with some hacks Obviously, the front page was easy because we have this column on the left side and we have this one on the right. And when they stack, that's the way I want them. I want them to be on mobile first and then that to stack underneath, which is perfect. But when you reverse the layout, obviously, it becomes a little bit trickier. And I forgot to remove this. Edit post. Remove. Update. Cool. Let's refresh and let's go to the other one because it has a little bit more content. So I also want to add the block tags. I'm not sure if I added any, so I'm going to click edit post and let's go inside here, inside post, we can go to tags and let's add a few. So we can say this is um, Australia. We can say beach, explore, Sydney and so on. So add a couple of tags and update this. If we go back, obviously the tags are not displayed anywhere but we can add them in the template. So I'm going to go back to the actual template and underneath here is where we can add them. So what I'm going to do is add and then we can just search for tags. Post tags is the one that I want. So I'll click on it and this should insert the post tags for us. But I also want to have a little bit of a description what these are. So what I'm going to do is add a row and inside the row is where I'm going to add a paragraph. So let's just put a paragraph and what I'm going to say is tags, tags like so, and then we're going to put the tags next to it. Let's drag that in. So we have the row like so done. We have the tags and we have the post tags. If we refresh, go back. And as you can see, we have tags, Australia, beach, explore, Sydney, and you can probably modify them as well. I would assume if you go to the theme.json, it's going to be under blocks, and then maybe it's going to be core slash, uh, Tag cloud, yeah, you can modify. So tag cloud, I'm not sure what the options are. So border, color, elements, filter, spacing, topography. Okay, not so bad. There is quite a lot of options that you can try to work with and modify them to adjust them the way you want. I'm going to save this and go back. The next thing that I want to add is comments and replies. To do this, we can go back and add them underneath here. So let's uh, comment. So comment loop query might be the one that we need. 
And there is also a post comments form, but I think this is the one that we need. Let's click on this and that's looking interesting. Okay, this is looking good, but I actually put it, but I actually went into the row. So I'm going to have to go back and drag this outside this row if I can. Uh, it's going to be hard. We need to drag it inside here. I'm going to drag inside the column and then push it down like so. Okay, that's looking good. Save, save. Let's go back. And as you can see, this is actually looking really nice. It's uh, the button is looking really nice. I really like this. So this is perfect. The other thing that you can mess around with is maybe you can have the also in here. And I'm what I'm going to do is let's go back super quickly and add it super quickly. So uh, post also, I don't know where you went. Let's go and um, here it. No, where is it? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Oh, here it is. So I can just move it up. And I just want it to be above the post comments and so on. So we can say show avatar, show bio. We can change the text and so on. Let's have a look at how this works. It looks a little bit small, but what I can do is just give it a little bit of space between. So I can click on the post author and have a look. A dimension. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of padding everywhere. Maybe we can do padding of 20 everywhere. And can I give it a border? Can't give it a border. Okay. So this is a little bit annoying, but what I can do is add it inside the row. And now I can add the post order order inside the row. And now I can give the border on the row. Here we go. So we let's say you have one pixel. Shall we try dashed? And then color can be the theme color here. Radius. I think I'm going to leave as it is. Let's save this. We need to push this a little bit. So maybe margin at the top. Uh, let's have a look. Add in and margin. So I'm going to put top to be 20 pixels. And is this bottom? Okay. We only have top and bottom here. Interesting. Save. Refresh. This is looking a little bit better. The text can be definitely bigger. Maybe we can look into how to do this right now. Uh, what is this called? This is called the post order. This is another issue that we're going to have. If I was to change this into the themes.json file, I believe that this is going to change on the entire website. So if I had this on the front page here, uh, let's say here I had the author, or even so, if I go back to the actual blog post here, that might mess up everything, which is not what I want. This is a little bit of a disadvantage, I guess, uh, but there is not much you can do unless you actually give this a specific class name and modify it. Or of course you can just create a custom block. That's cool. I'm going to leave this as it is because it's already looking pretty decent. And let's click on this one here. And have a look. All right, this is already looking decent. This needs to be changed a little bit, but I've already showed you how to add classes, how to change them and so on. All right, I think this is going to be it for the blog post. And now let's have a look at some of the pages. So the pages we've already kind of done. So the pages essentially have a very simple layout. We have a header and we have the footer. Everything inside is the actual page. So if I was to click on about, you will see that we have the header and the footer. So inside here is where we can create a quick about page. I can just edit it and maybe we can just do like before we can do two columns, columns, split them into, uh, we can do the left side to be 25, for example, the right side to be 85. We can add an image, uh, let's say image and then media library. I can insert the really nice image here. Uh, let's copy some of the information from the front page. Uh, maybe we can just write in here. So I'm going to write a paragraph. Hi, my name is Laura. And I can even do this as, I don't know, uh, instead of pixels, let's go with rem. And I can just do 2rem. Uh, I don't know, something like this will do. 
maybe you can add a contact form and so on. And if we go back, you'll see that just like so, oops, I forgot to remove this. Uh, but if we, but if we edit the page one more time, let's remove this super quickly. And just like so, we created, I know it's super basic, but we created a very, very, very basic about page. And just like so, we can go to the contact page and do the same. So if I was to edit this, we can go inside here, remove this. Uh, we do need a container. We do need a container here. So group, click on it. And inside the group, we can add the heading, let's say, um, contact page. Or even you can add the title, I think. Let's have a look. So post title. Yeah, you can add the post title and that's just going to bring the, the name of the page. So let's do it that, that way. And after this, you might want to have a form, but I don't think that there is any forms in, let's have a look. I don't think that there is any forms installed on in WordPress. So you can use a plugin for the form. You can use something like contact form seven. Save this. Let's go back to contact. And as you can see, we have contact, but this is not in the middle. So if we go back, click on the group, inherit the default layout. We also probably need to add the background. So now that should be fixed. All right. So obviously inside here we can add or, oops, this looks a little bit odd. We can put this paragraph inside the group and we can add or form and contact details like so. Refresh. You can definitely install contact form seven. If you go to the dashboard super quickly and go to plugins, search for add new. You can search for contact form seven, contact form. Uh, here we go. Contact form seven and we might as well install it. So this is now installed, activate it, and hopefully there'll be a block that we can just drag in. Let's have a look. So I'm going to have to refresh this. And inside here, let's do contact form seven, drag it in and just choose the contact form one, which is the default one. Obviously I'm not going to edit it right now. And like, so go back, refresh. And just like this, we have a little contact form. I think that this should be good enough for now. Let me know if you enjoy this sort of content. Let me know if you want to see more. And thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, consider subscribing and let me know what you think of the editor in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.